Just a couple of moments left here before the game starts, so I, I do want to get where we started, and that was uh, your feeling on what the players said to you about uh, Billy Hunter and then about Pat Corrales. Did you agree with what Eddie Robinson said, by the way, they didn't come to the management? Uh, you know, that's hard for me to say. Now, I've, uh, I think that there were probably, the management probably went to the players. Uh, there may have been a few players who, who went to the management and said, look, uh, this ought to be done this way or this ought to be done that way. I'm not sure. I can't say that that didn't happen. I do feel like, uh, knowing Brad Corbett the way I do and Eddie Robinson, that Brad likes to, to be very good buddies with his ball players, and he probably called some of his, some of his closer uh, friends on the, on the ball club up to his office and said, look, what do you think? And, and they probably expressed their views. And there was some, some dissatisfaction with Hunter. And like I said, it may be that some of them were using him as an easy scapegoat. I mean, absolutely, Jim. If you have a bad year, wouldn't it be great to blame it on your editor? Exactly. Exactly. I, and I feel like that that's probably the direction. I, just, I went over this point in a column a, few, oh, a month or so ago that a lot of the uh, griping and, and complaining that was going on in the ball club, uh, people were pointing fingers at Hunter and other, other things. And then I said, you know, the basically, in the column, I said, basically, the first place the Rangers have to look for the blame for this season is in the mirror. After that, you can look for other com more complicated reasons and, and uh, things that may have had something to do with it. But basically, they each have to look in the mirror and say, did I do my job? Uh, did I do what I was supposed to do or what, what I was expected to do? And really, there are three or four key players on this club who can't answer that with a yes. You led your story off of the front page of the Fort Worth Star-Telegram this morning with a quote from Pompano from training camp last spring of Billy Hunter saying, if we don't win, it will be my fault. But in retrospect, he didn't play any innings. He didn't swing any bats. That's exactly right. Bill felt that Ed, that he had a, a super club in spring training. He had, on paper, put together what he felt like was, if not at least the best team in the American League West or the best team in the American League, and he was even talking about it being the best team in baseball. Mm. And, of course, managers are enthusiastic. Everybody's enthusiastic in the spring, and you tend to try to take all this with a grain of salt still. The club was, on paper, it did look like an extraordinarily fine ball club. The hitting that was supposed to be there, however, never did come around. So uh, after that, you know, Bill, Bill at spring training uh, said that, did say that, used that quote. He said, if, I don't see how we can mess this ball club up. He said, you know, <laughs> if we don't win, it's going to be my fault. And then a Florida writer and a, and a paper out there at the time took that quote out of context and said, changed it around to say, if we don't win, I ought to be fired. Yeah. And Bill brought that up yesterday at breakfast, said uh, uh, maybe he had some idea what was going on, or, or maybe he <laughs> caused all this after all. But uh, uh, that's not that Bill, and when he saw that story, was a little perturbed at the time. He did not mean that, and, and he did not want to be fired. He did want to... He did want to come back and lead this team to a championship that he felt that, that it could win. Well, if you want some more of the details, Jim Reeves it was the only uh, reporter there at uh, Seattle when all this went on and is on the front page of the Fort Worth Star-Telegram. And, Jim, a very tired guy you are, and I thank you so much for talking with us, and we'll do it again, all right? Uh, thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Well, all right, I guess the, the one final uh, P.S., though, is uh, that Hunter was fired just before the last game of the season, and that does indicate he's kind of carrying the blame for the whole thing. Coming up next, exclusively here at WFAA, is the playoff game between the Boston Red Sox and the New York Yankees. Don't forget, we'll also have all the playoff games and the World Series right here on WFAA News Talk 57. Ed Bush, I'll see you tomorrow at 1 o'clock. Fenway Park in Boston, CBS Radio Sports presents the American League East playoff game on the CBS Radio Network and, of course, around the world through American Forces Radio. Hello, everybody. I'm Wynn Elliott, and to my left is Ernie Harwell, and we're getting set to provide you with all the excitement, and we imagine it will be, and all the thrills, too, of this game, which is going to determine who plays in the League Championship Series tomorrow night in Kansas City against the Kansas City Royals. This broadcast is sponsored by Buick. After all, life is to enjoy. The Brewers of Budweiser, the King of Beers, and by Ford Motor Credit Company, the people who want to give you credit for being you. capacity of Fenway Park here in Boston is 33,502. But that doesn't count in every broadcaster who could filch a ticket or a reporter 
Uh, we, we're going to do this program uh, in a number of languages. Any straight English, Puerto Rican and Hispanic to my right, and whatever I'm going to manage to get out. And as we talk to you, the two managers, Bob Lemon, formerly of the Cleveland Indians, who was a part of the last playoff, the only playoff game ever in the American League, he's presenting his uh, lineup to the umpires as is Don Zimmer with the big cut in his cheek. You remember him as the doughty infielder with the Brooklyn Dodgers. The uh, umpires surrounding the two, the smiles that they're giving forth with, I think, belie what they're really feeling, especially the managers, although I've never seen anybody as cool as Lemon. I was talking to Joe Cronin a moment ago, and he was the general manager in that series that the Red Sox played against Cleveland. I asked him, what did Lemon have? And he had said, too much for me to begin with, but what was his hallmark as a pitcher? And he said he was just had courage. He was aggressive. He came to you. I remember him as having a big curveball, but I remember that from the left and right field stands and then the 25-cent bleachers. And you know how long ago that's got to be. The boys in blue, first base umpire Don Denninger, rather he's the plate man, Jim Evans is at first, Al Clark is at second, and Steve Palermo is at third. And the managers have now uh, broken the conference and they're headed back to their benches. And this crowd is going to cheer every and anything that happens. And, of course, being radio people, we'll tell you about it. And we'll continue with that in just a moment. Couldn't be a better day. Beautiful sunshine. Just enough breeze to keep it on the cool side. The flag that indicates the direction of the wind is sort of blowing in towards first base in opposition to the magnetic power of the green monster, the wall out at left field. I think if you're going to hit a dead left field today, you're going to have to have it solidly on the bat. She isn't going to ride up in the air and find its own way home. It's going to have to be hit over. At least that's what the flag story seems to be right now. It's going to favor the left-handed hitters, the Reggie Jackson type. Reggie, incidentally, is going to be the DH in today's game. He isn't starting in right field. Lou Pinella is. And in a moment, we're going to give you the full lineup. Says the field for the moment is bare, except for the four umpires standing around home plate. As you can imagine, all the World Series atmosphere, and we're waiting for events and ceremonies and eventually the game. Okay. The umpire is at home plate. The wind, what's it going to do? It's going to blow towards right center field or in towards the first base. The ball is not going to waft over the left field wall. You're going to have to hit it over there. And as you look out into the bleachers, it's just jam-packed with people, all the different colors of the rainbow in Raymond. And they're all anticipating, well, this is the tomorrow which most of us are in the habit of saying doesn't exist. <laughs> It actually came true, this the second time in the history of the American League. Happened once before, the Cleveland Indians and the Boston Red Sox in 48. And Lou Boudreaux's Indians with Gene Bearden pitching on that day beat Denny Galehouse and the Red Sox and Joe McCarthy. Bob Lemon was on that Cleveland squad. And the first base and hitting coach of the Red Sox, Johnny Pesky, was on that Red Sox squad. And the clock turned back, what, almost 30 years ago to the day. As we look into the Yankee dugout right now, they're sitting, Mickey Rivers isn't. Mm -hmm. You know, Mickey with the dicky toed walk in center field and the almost girl-like toss of the left hand and as he bends over the plate and he treats the bat like a baton, whirls it around, he can't sit down. He's on his feet, as are a couple of the other boys in jackets whom we can't make. There's Yogi Berra. He's been through it all back again. And Yogi knows better than most that it ain't over until it's over. And right now, he's looking over the top of the Yankee dugout into the crowd, pointing to a soul here and there and greeting. Well, why don't we tell you who's going to be in the game as the crowd is warming to the fact that we're moments away from the beginning of it. Starting for the New York Yankees. The cheer, with all 33,000 plus coming to their feet, is for Mike Torres and Al Jackson, mostly for Torres, of course. He has finished his warm-up. He's coming in from the left center of the two bullpens out in right field. The jacket on his arm, walking slowly. He's done what he can before the game, and he's going to be ready in just a moment. And, of course, we're going to return in one minute right here on the CBO Radio Network 
This is Win Elliott, CBS Radio Sports. Seven, four, eight. One, four, one, four. Call the Dallas Times Herald Classified. Get results like you've never seen before. Seven, four, eight, one, four, one, four. Seven, four, eight, one, four, one, four. Call the Dallas Times Herald Classified at seven, four, eight. the classified pages Dallas turns to for results and we deliver because more people in Dallas read the Times Herald than any other newspaper and that means more people for you right where you want them close to home when you buy a Times Herald classified ad you'll get two lines for eight days for only seven dollars but better still you'll get results like you've never seen before and that's the reason why we are the pages more people are again from Fenway Park. This is Win Elliott with Ernie Harwell, and you know what this is. This is the game in the 1978 season of the American League, the Yankees and the Red Sox. They're about to take the field to get underway to see who goes in the Eastern Division playoffs in Kansas City. For the Yankees, in order, Rivers, center field, Munson, the catcher, Canella in right field, Reggie Jackson, the designated hitter, third baseman, Greg Nettles, Chris Shambliss, the first baseman, Roy White playing in left field, the substitute second baseman for the injured Willie Randolph will be Brian Doyle, shortstop Bucky Dent, and the pitcher Ron Guidry as the Red Sox take the field. In their batting order, shortstop Burleson, second baseman Remy, left field right, now the right field right, left field yeah. The catcher, Carlton Fitz, center fielder, Lynn, the designated hitter, Hobson, Scott, Rohammer, and the pitcher, Torres, and we'll be right back after this word. Make it sunny days and autumn nights, mountain streams and city lights, make it Buick, after all. seconds away from the beginning of the ending of the 1978 American East Division season. Mike Torres, the last few warm-up pitchers to Carlton Fisk, the ball being tossed around in the outfield, the plate umpire, Denninger slowly comes to the plate and says, Mike, I think you've had enough or almost just one more or two more. In the circle to the left, Seemingly unaffected by what's going on as Mickey Rivers reports have it that manager uh, Bob Lemon had a talk with Rivers last night about his lack of days to go play in the latter innings of the Cleveland 9-2 win. Doesn't mean a thing, however. This is the game. Torres has had one win against the Yankees, an abbreviated one on August 3rd, I think it was. That was the second of the rainout doubleheader game they played in Yankee Stadium. That seemed to be pivotal at that time. The Yankees seemed to be through. Gidry has pitched and won two against the Red Sox, both shutouts. And you know what that means? That means the enemy is at hand. As far as the Boston Red Sox fans are concerned, Mickey Rivers has come into the batting box on the left-hand side. Fisk and the umpire a little chat as the umpire Denninger leans over to clean the plate. Remember this Red Sox park is peculiar. 315 to the left, 420 dead center, 305 to the right, and Mickey Rivers can hit him in all directions. Ernie, the moment is at hand. 
Right one, Elliot, and hi, everybody. It's great to be here for this exciting baseball game. Mickey Rivers stepping in against the right-hander Torres. Rivers hitting 264, 11 home runs, 48 runs batted in. Left hand batter, he takes the ball low in the dirt, a breaking pitch. Torres, the pitching hero for the Yankees last year as they beat the Dodgers, and now he's pitching against them in the biggest game of the year in the American League. Big right-hander kicks and deals, and Rivers takes a high fastball, 2-0. Torres is the type of pitcher who has his troubles. He'll walk five or six a game, sometimes pitch a shutout doing it. It's not always easy for him. The pitch is a ball in close. Three and all on the leadoff man, Rivers. Last Thursday, he beat Detroit. Torres did one nothing on a three-hitter, but he walked seven. Now Rivers leaning in, waiting. And he takes a walk. Ball four. The Yankees get their leadoff man on base. And Ernie, as you know... That is part of the spark of the Yankee attack to get the fleet-footed Rivers on first base. He's always a threat to go. And Munson, so good with that bat, who is so effective hitting the right field. As George Scott goes over to try to settle down big Mike Torres from Topeka, Kansas. No question that Rivers is the man who makes this ball club go. Now, Munson, as a win said, is a good hit-and-run man, a fine number two hitter. He's up there with a 297 average. Six home runs and 70 runs batted in. One of the facets of this game is the competition between the two great catchers, Fisk and Munson. Both uh, rookies of the year. Both veterans now and the quarterbacks of their respective ball clubs. So here is Torres now looking in to see what he can do with Munson. Well, the infield is up a little bit. Rivers, a threat to run. He goes. The pitch is taken. Here's Fisk. His throw to second. He is safe at second base. Remy covered, took the throw from Fisk. Rivers gets a stolen base. Rivers is now four for four in steals against the Boston Club this year. The pitch was a high one. Fisk had an opportunity, but Rivers just outlegged the ball. And so far, Mr. Torres has not found the strike zone. Outfield is straight up on uh, Thurman Munson. Regarded as uh, one of the best money players in baseball, Thurman, from Canton, Ohio. Here's a pitch. He takes a strike. That was a breaking ball. Started his swing and checked it. Brohammer, the third baseman, even with a bag and not the very wide of it. He's got to keep an eye on Rivers up man at second of base. The game's just started. No score in Boston. Here's a set. Here's a pitch. He takes the ball outside. That was a fastball. Ernie, notice how much of the shortstop they give uh, Munson. Burleson is way over in the hole. He's trying to keep that man close. And uh, Munson does get a lot of acreage there between the Brohammer and Burleson. Now the set, the pitch. He swings and doesn't get it. 2-2 two -two to count on him. Steps out, uh, says a word or two to umpire Denkinger. Back of the plate. Lou Pinella waiting at the on-deck circle for the Yankees. No score in the first inning. Rivers drew a walk and stole second. Now a 2-2 delivered to Thurman Munson. On the way, he takes a half cut. It is a ball checked in time. Ball bounces away from Fisk. He retrieves to his right. Rivers in scoring position puts the Yankee pressure on the Red Sox because during the regular season, if you got Ron Guidry a run early... It was a great, great help. Torres uh, takes his time out on the mound, slipped his glove off, rubbed up the ball a little bit. Munson is a batter who likes to take his time getting back in the batter's box, too. So he's waiting now on the full count delivery from Torres. And the big Boston right-hander sets and then fires one to second, ducking behind his Burleson, but the tag was late on Rivers. He's back safely. Al Clark, the umpire out there at second base. Feel a little bit to right on uh, Munson. Yeah. Okay. Every, uh, Big, sturdy, right hand about away. Here it comes. He swings and misses. Struck him out. Looks like a hard curve from Duran. Here is Lou 
Canella, the right-hand batting outfielder hitting 314 with six home runs and 69 RBIs. And throughout the year, and he's probably the most consistent man with men on base, despite the fact that he's not the top RBI man, he seemed to be there whenever they were needed. He manages to get his bat on that ball. He's especially good low ball hitter. Not many 300 hitters in the American League. Lou Pinella was one of them. Man on second, still no score. First inning, Rivers leads down the line. The pitch to Lou, swung on a bounding ball, grabbed by Brohammer, third wide, throws to Scott, he got him, and Rivers holds it second. Good play by Brohammer. He had to go a good bit to his left. And now as Reggie Jackson comes to the plate and he gets his greeting from the Boston fans, Carlton Fisk goes out to have a little conversation with Mike Torres. Carlton calls one batter at a time. We had a little conversation before the game. Munson is reputed to know three or four at a time. Carlton says, nope. When the ball count gets three and two, then I check the on-deck circle. But I mostly stay current. But right now, the battle of nerves as Torres is looking out to center field. Jackson's saying, I've been all through this before. <laughs> no score, first inning. Jackson hitting 274, but only uh, 232 against Boston. 26 home runs, 96 runs batted in for Reggie. Torres sets and pitches. Here's a miss. He blew the fastball through. Ernie, I couldn't even see that one. That was a fastball. That was Smokey. Man on second, Rivers, he walked to start the game, stole second base. Stayed there as Munson struck out and Fanella bounced to third. Now it's Jackson against Torres. Here's the pitch. He takes strike called inside corner fastball. You know, Al Jackson, the pitching coach, said about Torres before the game, he's so strong, he thinks he can throw the ninth inning and the first inning and the first inning and the ninth inning, and you have to slow him down and get him to appreciate that he's only human. He's throwing hard right now. Let's see what Jackson can do with two strikes against him. Rivers at second, two down, game scoreless. Here's a pitch. He swings as a fly ball into the left field. Fairly deep. Yuskrimski goes over near the wall, and he's got it right at the base of the wall. Side retired. No runs, no hits, no errors. One man left. And at the end of a half inning, Boston coming to bat, and the Yankees and the Red Sox are scoreless. When do you think? Budweiser. Whenever the moment you sprinkle the great beer. When do you think? Budweiser. Whenever the good times are moving to right here. After the work is done, while you're still having fun, the king of beers is waiting for your call. When you say Budweiser. You said it all. Anheuser, Bush, St. Louis. Buick continues the turbocharging of America with the world's biggest choice of turbocharged cars. The 1979 Turbo Buicks. Four cars, all powered by the remarkable turbocharged V6. To drive one is to want one. The new Turbo Buicks. Century Turbo Coupe, Regal Sport Coupe, the Sabre Sport Coupe, and the Riviera S-Type. When it comes to turbocharging, nobody else even comes close. We're back at Fenway Park, and after the rocky start of passing Rivers and his stealing second, Mike Torres blew it by the Yankees, and you can feel the tension sort of melt aside here in this game, in this broadcast, presented by authority of the Major League Baseball, intended solely for the private, non-commercial use of our audience, any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of descriptions and accounts of this game without the express written consent of Major League Baseball is prohibited. And this is a town that knows its baseball. They knew their team was in trouble when old Fleetfoot got on there and stole second. And now the well of emotion as the Red Sox want to see what their team is going to do against the wonderful man of 160 pounds, maybe the one of the, the best at his weight I've ever seen, Ron Guidry. Ernie? Well, he's a great one. He had a 24-3 and record so far. And he's got to be the Cy Young Award winner. Everybody has conceded that, I think. And it's very interesting today because he's competing against the World Series hero of last year. 
And here's Burleson to lead it off, and he fouls it away upstairs. Rick Burleson, the right-hand batting infielder of the Boston Red Sox, batting 248, five home runs, and 49 runs batted in. However, he's four for nine against Gidry, one of the few Red Sox batters who's been able to handle Gidry. There's a breaking pitch in too close. One and one, they count. Gidry throws a very hard slider. There's a swing and a miss. That slider made him a great pitcher, picking it up from Sparky Lyle. Usually has excellent control. He's pitched two two-hit shutouts against Boston. Burleson takes the ball just off the corner. That was close. 2-2 on the Boston leadoff man. The game is scoreless at Fenway Park. Burleson stepping away. The rooster, they call him. Don Zimmer gave him that name. Here's a pitch. He takes a strike. Struck him out. Got the outside corner with a breaking ball. Burleson complaining to Don Denkinger. Back at the plate. Now walks away. So there's one down. And Remy will be the batter. So the Bayou Bomber does not start off with Bayou Butterflies. Paul strike on Burleson, who's had his problems this year. He said he, mostly because he put himself under pressure, but he's trying to stay loose. Too loose on that one as he watched it go by. Here's Remy, a 276 hitter. Two home runs, 44 runs batted in. Fastball high. No score first inning. Red Sox at bat, one out, nobody on. The left-hander pitches. It is a swing and a fly ball lifted to short left field. Roy White is there. He has it. And there are two down. And here is Jim Rice. So we've got a confrontation now between the Cy Young Award winner and the outstanding hitter in the Major League. Listen to the ovation for Rice. They're standing here in Fenway Park. Mr. Hero. Interestingly enough, both balls hit so far in this first inning have been hit to the wrong field. The batters couldn't get around. 315 batter, 46 home runs. Rice swings and misses. That was a fastball. Rice has one hit in 10 trips against uh, Guidry in their meetings uh, this season. Now they wind up in the pitch. He cuts and misses again. Generally, the pattern against Rice by opposing pitches is to jam him in close and then go outside with breaking pitches. Gidry's been throwing tight. There's a ball low. One and two. Sometimes they'll reverse it. They start outside with the slow stuff and then come in. Rice has batted only 274 against the Yankee pitching, the total Yankee pitching this year. Two out, nobody on, no score first inning. The pitch is a ball low. Two-two on Jim Rice. He stands deep and likes to move into the pitch. Uh, Gidry checking his sign, ready to go to work. Delivers. Rice swings and strikes out. And Gidry sets down the Red Sox. One, two, three. At the end of one, the Yankees nothing, Red Sox nothing. At Ford Credit, we've been helping people finance their cars for 18 years. So we realize that sometimes a personal situation may cause you some concern about getting credit. For example, maybe you want to finance a second car and wonder whether you'll qualify. Maybe you've just changed jobs and you're concerned that this will affect your credit. And then again, maybe your income is subject to seasonal ups and downs. Or maybe you're just out of school and want to start building a credit rating. Well, at Ford Motor Credit Company, we believe in people. So whatever your personal situation, have your Ford or Lincoln Mercury dealer call us. He'll lay out a wide selection of payment plans. And credit decisions are quick while you're in the showroom. Remember, when you're buying or leasing a new car or truck, Ford Credit wants to give you credit for being you. Tell your Ford or Lincoln Mercury dealer you'd like to finance with us. Ford Motor Credit. First inning action for the Yankees. No runs, no hits. Rivers got a walk, stole second, and was left as Torres was equal to the occasion. He had one strikeout. Torres in the first inning was a shaky, threw five straight balls, then went back to sheer power. Real power. Hard, fast balls. 
Guidry, noted for his speed, seemed to be the more cunning of the two, where you would expect him to just rear back. He struck out two. He struck out Burleson on a call strike, pulled a string on Rice, and got him swinging way out ahead. And it was a one, two, three inning for Ron Guidry, who in his three starts against the Red Sox beat him twice, shot him out both times, two hits each time. The third time, there was no decision. The Yankees won the ball game up in New York. So it's even Steven, nothing, nothing. The pitchers have controlled the game in this first inning. That's not surprising. And now the game should settle down to just sheer excitement. Something at the moment is delaying the game. There's a sign up in center field on the back wall, we're being told by the house announcer and played umpire Don Denninger has pointed out there and said, get it down. Evidently, it's a white background, which is disturbing the uh, the batters, but not nearly as much as Torres and Guidry obviously are. Both these teams come to this playoff game as a result of dramatic and emotional streaks, winning streaks in the latter part of the year, as you know. The Red Sox eight straight. The climax yesterday is Louis Tiant, the portly man of the pirouette, shut out. Toronto, 5 nothing on two hits, whereas the Yankees fell to Rick Waits, the left-hander, and some sloppy play, and were defeated 9-2. to two. So here we are as the prelude to going to Kansas City. Oh, they want all the signs down. I remember when George Weiss was the general manager of the New York Yankees, and it, this is more or less a television gambit. George, who led the pinstripe version of the Yankees, would have nothing to do with signs, would allow none of them. Of course, these are not pinstripe Yankees any more than the Red Sox are. I don't mean to say this is a Yankee thing. But uh, the umpires have now caused all the signs to be taken down on the center field wall above the bleachers there. Evidently, it was forming a bad background for the hitters. And speaking of the hitters, Mr. Golden Glove of the Yanks, Greg Nettles, is stepping in. Ernie, he's facing Mike Torres. He's batting 278, 27 home runs, 93 runs batted in. The left hand batting third baseman, and Nettles at the plate. No score. There's a fastball in tight on him. Always a home run power man, Greg Nettles. Leaning in, waiting now. Here's the motion and the pitch on the way. Change up, popped in the air, back toward uh, shortstop. Burleson shading his eyes, and he has it for the out. It almost seemed to me as though Nettles was attempting to uh, stop his swing there. I think he did that. It was sort of a half cut, and the uh, ball hit the top of the bat and just uh, popped up in the air. Here's Shambliss, who hit the dramatic home run to win one playoff for the Yankees. Left hand batting first soccer hitting 274. 12 home runs, 90 runs batted in. Torres looks him over. Mike winds and pitches. There's a curve over but low. Ball one. Torres, you remember, broke in in the National League with the Cardinals. Then to Montreal. Then to Baltimore. Oakland. Yankees. And uh, finally to Boston. Here's a pitch. It is a strike above the knees. No score, second inning. The Yanks at bat against the Boston Red Sox at Fenway Park. There's a inside fastball. Let's pause five seconds for stations to identify themselves on the CBS radio network. News, sports, and talk radio for the Metroplex. This is WFAA Dallas-Fort Worth. And he was playing deep and near the line. That ball was hit hard. And there are two out for the Yankees. And here is Roy White, who's a veteran on this club. He's been here longer than anybody for continuous service. Switch batting outfielder. Sometimes it seems that they forget about Roy, but when the big game comes up, he's always there. Strong and silent. Absolutely. 268 batter. Eight home runs, 42 runs batted in. Jokes that bat a little bit and uh, backs away from a high tight pitch. Ball one, the count on White. No score, second inning. The Yankees and the Red Sox. White has batted 347 against Red Sox pitching this year. And he cuts and misses. Torres took a little something off that pitch and got it down around the knees.
Right-hander deals again. There's a foul drive it back in the seats. Over back at third base. Gentleman from Revere will take that one home with him. <laughs> Where my misspent youth was spent on the beaches. <laughs> How did you know he was from Revere? I just figured that out. Now they wind up in the pitch to Roy. He cuts and misses. Struck him out and the side out in order. At the end of one and a half inning, New York nothing, Boston nothing. Mike Torres. He has one walk and two strikeouts, and in that second inning, he depended more on his stuff and his guile and change of pace. He was more of a pitcher in the second inning. In the first inning, he was a thrower. More or less, I presume, to loosen up to get into the game to knock out the butterflies. He was just rearing back and power pitching. One of the pitches he threw by Reggie Jackson, I tell you, friends, I didn't even see. Uh, Ron Guidry, on the other hand, who is noted for his speed, also has that slider. And the change of pace. And Ron, seemingly nerveless, this young man of steel, had a perfect first inning, two strikeouts, and a pop fly. And here's the captain of the Boston Red Sox. When Carl Yastrzemski first came around, Ted Williams said he'd eventually be a great hitter. Guess who's here today? Ted Williams. Right. Had to come back. He's looking great, too. I bet the fish are happy. <laughs> yeah, leave him alone for a couple of days. Yeah. Here's Jazz at the plate now. A great ovation for him. Left hand about a wedding, and Gidra delivers. It is a strike call. Batting 276, Jastrzemski. 16 homers, 79 runs batted in. This is his 18th season with the Red Sox. Gidry kicks and deals. Here's a long belt to right. Maybe fair, maybe foul. It is a home run for Yuskinski. And Boston leads one to nothing. If you're a Red Sox rooter and you're in the kitchen and the radio is in the living room, you can tell that the Red Sox just did something. That's the way I always can tell. So you run in, and now we can tell you Carl Yastrzemski has just hit a home run into the right field bleachers. It's one nothing Red Sox, second inning. And when Elliott, that is the first home run the Red Sox had had off Gidry all season. It was a drive down the line in the right field seat. Stayed fair, not very much. A home run for Yastrzemski, one to nothing Red Sox. Here's Fisk getting 283. 20 homers, 88 RBIs, and Carlton takes the ball outside. Boston jumps in front on the home run by Yastrzemski. Outfield is straight up on Fisk. No, the count on Carlton Fisk. He'll be followed by Fred Lynn. Both victories by Gidry had been shutouts over the Boston Ball Club. Now the left-hander, Gullivis. Here's a fly ball to the left field. Fight is there near the warning track. Makes the catch. And there's one away. That started off like it had excitement, but it died in the wind. And Yastrzemski, the unkindest cut of all by a Long Island potato farmer against the Yankees. 
And he played ball down there with his dad on his dad's semi-pro team. His father said when uh, my son was hitting about 450, I decided I'd better quit. <laughs> Here's Freddie Lynn at the plate now, hitting 298. And he swings fly ball center field. Should be caught. Rivers is going back. Looking up. He's there. Makes the catch. Hit it pretty deep. And uh, Rivers backed up to grab it. So there are two down. And Butch Hobson, the designated batter, steps up. Ernie, the Red Sox heavy hitters are getting the ball, getting their bat on that ball. All three balls, one home run, then one to extreme left, one to extreme center. Here's Hobson, who is uh, capable of a long ball. He has 17 homers, 250 hitter. Here's a cut and a miss. Hobson uh, suffering with those bone chips in his elbow. Not able to play at third base, but he can be the DH. Here's a foul back on the screen. And the word is that if the, the Red Sox lose, Hobson goes in the hospital tomorrow. Here's a foul back to the screen. He is still alive with two strikes on him. In the last 10 games, uh, Hobson has batted at 361 as a designated hitter. Gidry coming back fast delivers. It is a ball wide. That was his fastball. Gidry generally does not take a lot of time between pitches. Slender left-hander gets his sign from Munson. The wind-up and the pitch. He takes the ball outside. 2-2. Jam-packed Fenway Park. Very enthusiastic crowd here today. 1-0 Boston leads in the second inning. Here's the pitch. Swing of the bounding ball to third. Nettles grabs it. Throw to first to Chambliss. And the Red Sox are out. They get a run. One run. One hit. No errors. Nobody left. At the end of two, Boston one. Yankees nothing. Gee, Rob, I bet you pick a purple car with green racing stripes just to be mean. The smart way to buy a new Chevrolet. Hi, Frank Lieber here. As you can tell, everything's normal with us. The kids are discussing some fun we're having at Arapaho and Central that just happens to coincide with new Chevy time. Daughter Robin has turned 16. And to celebrate this great event, oh, Dad. Late Chevrolet's having a contest. If Robin were to be able to buy a new Monza, what combination would she pick? What color? What accessories? What interior and exterior? For the chance to win a five-day trip for two to a Colorado ski resort. What a deal. Well, it won't be easy, guys. The smart way to buy a it's new Chevrolet. Come on in to Arapahoe and Central. See the new Chevys. And try to figure out what Monza Rob would buy. Dad, you better put this in a sealed envelope. She changes her mind a lot. The smart way Mitchell. No purchase necessary. And the Yankees come out of their corner. <laughs> Out to swing the bat first. To be the substitute second baseman, Ernie. This, is this uh, Denny Doyle's younger brother, I think this you told This is the brother, Denny. This is the only uh, real uh, true rookie in the ballgame today, I'd say. A lot of pressure on him. Brian Doyle from Cave City, Kentucky. He's also the twin brother of Blake, who's in the minor leagues. And he's uh, subbing for Willie Randolph who uh, missed the last game. Well, he has a full leg muscle. And as it's happened in championship-type games before, the, the least known can suddenly pop up and be the guy that, that does it for you. Happened a lot in the World Series, uh, all the way back to 1906, I think, George Rowe of the Chicago's did it. And from then on, they've uh, had the unknowns come through. Well, here's Torres, ready to go to work. Brian Doyle, D-O-Y-L-E, hitting 200. It's a pop-up back into short right field. Rice is coming in, going back. Remy, Remy's got it. He went between uh, Rice and Scott to make the catch. Well, Doyle uh, hits a pop-up that Remy takes care of in short right field. And here is Bucky Dent. They find Yankee shortstop batting 243. Four home runs and uh, 37 RBIs for Bucky. Right-hander against the right-hander, Mike Torres on the mound, and the Red Sox have the lead, 1-0 on the second-inning home run by Yastrzemski. It is a curve a little bit high. The wind has now shifted, blowing to left field, Ernie. 
Here's the wind up by Mike. He delivers. Here's a strike on the outside corner. That's right. It's just the opposite as it uh, was when we first came here. Mm -hmm. Bright sunny day. Great weather. Here's the motion. Here's the pitch on the way. He takes the ball high. 2-1 the count on Bucky Dent. One out. Nobody on. Boston leads 1-0. Yankees batting in the third. And the pitch. He swings. Fly ball. Right center field. Lynn and Rice digging. Rice is there. He's got it. Rice coming on strong. Drop a little uh, short pop fly. And Dent is out. That's two away. That, for a moment, looks as if it might drop in. Yankees have hit only one ball on the ground so far. That was the grounder that uh, Pinella hit to Brohammer in the first inning. Yes, Torres has been pitching high. Well, here's Mickey Rivers, who is the only Yankee runner. He walked to start the ball game, stole second. Since then, the next eight batters have gone down in order. Left-hand batter swings and misses. Well, he took four pitches the first time up, and he swung at the first one this time. Well, that one was by him before he swung. Brohammer in close, bunt possibility. Here's the pitch to Mickey. It is very high, and that will even things at one and one. Red Sox lead one to nothing in the third. They got a home run from Yastrzemski in the second inning off Gidry. Torres pitching to Mickey Rivers. And he swings a line shot fair down in the right field corner. That'll be the first hit for the Yankees. He's digging for two. Rice picks up the ball, and Rivers now cruises in with a double. It's the second time he's been the bat. He's been on second base each time. A two-out double for Rivers. He is the tying run. Munson will be the batter. Torres struck him out the first time they met. And there was no question about that hit. It was with authority right down the first baseline. As acrobatic as Scott is, he had no chance to get to it. And I'd like to conjecture if Torres stays high and loses some of his power, he's going to be losing a lot of baseballs in this park. Well, it can happen to a fastball pitcher. Here's Munson now. He uh, struck out his first trip. They play him a little bit to right. Yastrzemski, Lennon, Rice in the outfield. Brohammer at third. Burleson at short. Remy at second. Scott at first. That's the defense for Boston. Fisk is the catcher. Torres the pitcher. There's a foul upstairs. That looked like a pitch that jammed him. Back uh, toward the press box. Boston Globe one time at a Yale-Harvard game sent 11 men out to cover. The 11th man covered the band. And I understand that the Boston Globe has 11 here today to tie the record. <laughs> All sports writers. They're going to outnumber them anyway. Munson waiting on a strike two delivery. He takes the ball. Good stop by Fisk. That one hit in front of the plate to the right of the catcher. One and one. You know, Fisk is playing with the ribs. They're not bandaged anymore. And um, chatting with him before the game. He got him by going into the railing after a foul pop here against Cleveland. Broke one, injured one, and, and the cartilage was a little array back there. But he seems a, much better now. He's a tough man. He's got great endurance. This is his 157th game that he has appeared in this year. For a catcher, that is phenomenal. 1-1, one, one, the count on Munson as uh, Torres has slowed his pitching pace a little bit. Two out of man on. Here's the pitch. He swings a line drive to right. It'll be foul. Back into the seats. That is a Munson special. Reaching out with a ball over the plate so that he can extend his arms and hit it to right center. That one he got a little too far out. And that's why he's a good number two hitter, too, uh, when he can punch that ball behind the runner when he has to. Remember a couple of years ago in the losing four games against the Reds in the World Series, I think he got about six straight hits to right center. He can do it. Uh, Torres, a, a big right-hander. Taking his time. Munson back in the batter's box. one nothing Boston, third inning. Rivers at second, two out for the Yankees. Here's the pitch. It is a ball that jammed him. He checked his swing. 2-2, two -two, the count on Thurman. Great New England autumn day. Couldn't have uh, picked a better day. 
Torres at Texas time gets his sign from Fisk. Munson digging in, waiting on a 2-2 pitch. Here it comes. He swings and misses. The ball dropped by Fisk. He'll flip it over to Scott to complete the strikeout. And the inning is over. No runs on one hit. No errors. One man left. We go to the last half. The third. Boston won. The Yankees nothing. Make it sunny days and autumn nights. Mountain streams and city lights. Make it Buick. After all, life is to enjoy. Leave some time for kids and have it fun. Open air and summer sun. Make it Buick. After all, life is to enjoy. To the third, the home team Boston Red Sox coming to bat and they lead one nothing as a result of a Carl Yastrzemski home run in the second inning. A line drive blast just to the left of the foul line in right field and coming to bat for the Red Sox is George the Boomer Scott, the Golden Glove type first baseman who has had a comparatively bad year, at least for him at bat. He seems to be uppercutting the ball. He's had to sit down a couple times for lack of hitting, but he still remains a favorite here. The Boston fans are going to love everybody if the Red Sox win this game. Absolutely. Scott batting 230. He's uh, pulled out of the slump to some extent to help out the uh, Bostons here in the late stages. 12 home runs and 54 runs batted in. So Gidry ready to go to work. 1-0 Boston third inning, and George Scott takes a high fastball in too close. Brohammer will be on deck now. Gidry kicks and delivers. Here's a fly ball, deep center field. Rivers going back, 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 and that one is off the wall. Scott going for two. Here's the throw in. Not in time. He slides into the double. Doubles off the wall and set it. Off the bottom of the wall. Do you think Mickey might have gotten closer to that one? I think he might have. He got a late start, but uh, the last time the ball was hit out there, the ball in uh, hit. He got back and uh, made the catch in the same fashion. This time he didn't do it. Wait a minute. Uh, Mickey has come in off the field. Uh, evidently, his sunglasses. Yeah, he's changing his sunglasses, and the, the motion that he made of disgust indicated that he had trouble seeing the ball. Or I'm reading into his motions. I don't know, Ernie. It did seem to me he could have gotten back late start or early give up, one or the other. Well, it's trouble of the sunshine that uh, might have caused either one of those uh, problems. Scott gets a double off the wall in center over the head of Rivers. And Brohammer, who's a left-hand batter, he used to be a switch batter, but back in 72, uh, he decided he'd be a left-hand batter all the time. Brohammer hitting 235. And he bunts the ball. It's out in front, picked up by Munson. The throw will be the first. It's a sacrifice. Scott takes third. The play went Munson to Chambliss to catch it for the first baseman. Munson took a look at third, decided he'd better go to first base. That puts Scott at third. And Burleson, the leadoff man at the plate, he struck out uh, leading off in the first inning. And yet he's a very difficult man normally to strike out. He is a tough man, and they've got the infield in now. Try to cut down that man at the plate on a ground ball. one nothing Boston on the second inning home run by Ustrimsky. The Red Sox threatening again against the left-hander from Louisiana, Ron Guidry. He winds, he pitches to Burleson, who takes a ball low. Magnificent year for Guidry. 24 wins, three defeats. 
Each time he's lost, he's lost to a man named Mike. Here's the pitch. It is a ball low. Mike Caldwell, Mike Flanagan, and Mike Willis. And at Gidry, his three losses. Mike Torres, his pitching rival today. Here's the 2-0 delivery. Burleson swings a tap, a hit the third. Scott will stay at third. Nettles grabs the ball, fires over to Chambliss. No advance. There are two out now with a Boston runner third. And Jerry Remy will be the batter. Well, 11 years ago, Jerry Remy was a kid out on the bleachers. Watching that uh, World Series team here in Fenway Park. And he is right here in the big one now via the uh, California Angels. Remy, the first time up, hit a fly ball to short left. Gidry delivers, and it is a strike call. Mr. Denkinger said so. Scott still at third. Now they're two down, and Remy looks at a ball outside. One and one, they count on Jerry. Tim Rice waiting on deck. Uh, Gidry coming right back, delivers. It is a strike on the outside corner. A little disagreement from the folks who paid the umpire. One and two, the count. Scott on third, one nothing Boston, third inning. The windup and the pitch. Remy swings, pop fly, short left center field. White is there. He has it, and the Red Sox threaten but do not score. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one man left on base at the end of three. Boston won, New York nothing. When do you sing? St. Louis. Make it sunny days and autumn nights, mountain streams and city lights. Make it Buick. After all, life is to enjoy. Leave some time to gain some heaven fun. Open air and summer sun. Make it Buick. After all, life is to at Fenway and it's through three and the Red Sox lead it one nothing. Carl Yastrzemski's second inning home run. The Yankees have twice had Mickey Rivers get as far as second base. In the first inning he walked and stole and got no further. In the third inning he doubled down the right field foul line with two out and stayed there as Munson uh, fanned as uh, Mike Torres was equal to that occasion. In this past inning, uh, George Scott doubled off the center field wall, was sacrificed to third, but Ron Gidry just hitched up all 160 of those pounds. He got Burleson on a grounder, couldn't advance Scott, and the fly ball by uh, Remy to left field ended the inning. So it's been a pitcher's battle so far on this beautiful day, this last day of the American League regular season. It's the Yankees' turn for the fourth time, and here's Ernie Harlow. And it'll be uh, Lou Pinello went up there at the plate. Uh, Lou, the first time up, at a ground ball to Brohammer and was tossed out at first. He's the only Yankee to hit the ball on the ground so far against Mike Torres. And he's hit safely now in the, his last 11 games, Pinello. And over that span has a 3-3-3 batting average. Young man from Tampa, Florida, Lou Pinella, digging in right-hander against the right-hander. one nothing Boston leading fourth inning at Fenway. Here's the wind-up by Torres. He pitches a fastball in for a strike. That one in above the knees. One run, two hits for the Red Sox. The Yankees have no runs and one hit. Neither team has made an error. Pinella hits a bounding ball to deep short. Burleson can't handle it. It got past Brohammer off the glove of Burleson, and Pinella turns and is safe at first base. That will be the second hit for the Yankees. Hit the ball very much like he did the first time, except maybe a couple of feet uh, toward the shortstop side of the third baseman. And I thought a little harder, too. 
It's the second time in the game the Yankees have uh, put their leadoff man on base. Uh, Reggie Jackson, the designated batter who applied to Yastrzemski in fairly deep left field. Well, the first trip steps up again. They've got Rice very deep in the corner and right. Lynn is pulled over toward the right center a little bit. The infield and double play depth on Reggie. Torres looking him over. Pinella getting a lead at first base where Scott holds on the bag with him. Reggie takes a curve in close, ball one. Reggie, when he's hitting Ernie, will hit down that left field line. He is almost more effective that way than going all out for the home run and more often than not striking out. And so much strength that he can hit the long ball in any direction. Here's a drive to right field. Rice is there. He's got it. And back to first goes Pinella. It was close at first, but Pinella got back. Good throw by Rice. Yeah. I think uh, Lou was a little uh, blasé about getting back there, and it almost cost him. That's right. As Burleson was a little blasé on recovering the, the ball that went through the infield, and a faster runner than Pinella might have a save going to second. Like in yesterday, Munson broke for home on a pop fly to the shortstop, and Verizer was so dumbfounded, Munson made it. <laughs> I'll tell you about Rice on that play. He had positioned himself perfectly. Here's Greg Nettles, who popped the shortstop his first time up. one nothing. The Red Sox lead the Yankees in the fourth inning. A man out on the man out for New York. It is a fastball outside on Nettles. Nettles uh, grew up in San Diego. Grew up about the five blocks from where Ted Williams was born. Yankees have quite a few well-traveled players. Nettles is one of them. He fouls it away back in the dirt. Greg's been on base 15 out of the last uh, 31 times at bat. Well-traveled Ernie in the way of having come to the Yankees by trade. Rivers, Panella, Nettles, Chambliss. Jackson? Jackson? No, he was bought. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> he well, was a I, was, I was thinking about moving around the different Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. It was not a trade. It was an outright purchase. Here's the uh, set now by uh, Torres, the big right-hander. Kicks and deals. Here's a foul fly that'll reach the seats back a third. One and two, the count on Craig. Vanilla on first base. Nettles, uh, one of those fellows that, that has a lot of problems with the spelling of his first name. Yeah. G-R-A-I-G. one nothing. Red Sox lead it. Yankees are batting in the fourth inning. They've got a man out and a man out. And Nettles swings and pops one up toward third base. Going back is Burleson. He's got it on the grass behind the Brohammer. And then the throw comes over to Remy. So Bonello holds it first on the pop-up. And the Yankees are still hitting the ball up in the air. And look to me from here. We are just to the right of home plate in an outdoor covered with a canopy. Perfectly comfortable. But it looked to me like he got jammed on that one. I think it was right down on the hands or fisty, as they say. Well, here's Chambliss. Well, these Yankees are loaded with clutch hitters through the middle part of this batting order. Torres delivers and Chambliss fouls one on the screen. Yankees uh, and the type of lineup a pitcher can't relax any time. Mm -hmm. that, that's been their history. Outfield deep to right on Chambliss. one nothing. Red Sox lead, fourth inning. He cuts a ground ball, hit up the middle, grabbed by Brose. He tags the bag at second, gets the fourth off on Panella. And the Yankees are retired in the fourth inning. So they have no runs on one hit, no errors, and one man left on base. We go to the last half of the fourth at Fenway Park. Red Sox one, New York nothing. Whatever your occupation, here's something you should know about financing a new car or truck. If you're a teacher, farmer, or have any occupation with an unusual or seasonal pay schedule, you could encounter some problems when it comes to financing. And that's a very good reason to consider us. We're Ford Credit, 
and we give special consideration to people with unusual pay schedules. In fact, our programs can help your dealer try to work out a payment plan tailored just for you on a Ford, Mercury, or Lincoln car, Ford truck, tractor, or recreational vehicle. Ford Credit. We're as close as your neighborhood Ford or Lincoln Mercury dealer. Remember, when you're buying or leasing a new car or truck, Ford Credit wants to give you credit for being you. Tell your Ford or Lincoln Mercury dealer you'd like to finance with us. Ford Motor Credit. The Red Sox coming to bat bottom of the fourth. Each team has two hits, but the Red Sox have one run because one of their hits was a home run by Carl Yastrzemski in the bottom of the second into the right field stands. And CBS Radio Sports is so happy to have you along listening to this playoff game. We hope you can join us for the World Series Diamond Jubilee starting the 10th of October. NFL action, Monday night and weekend games, Super Bowl, Masters Golf, Triple Crown, and more throughout the year. You just keep your radio portable or anchored in your living room or wherever to write this station, CBS, the number one radio network for news programs and sports. Let's see, the big Boston right fielder, the strong boy, the guy with the total bases, the home run, and the power. And Ernie, after yesterday's game, he was out practicing hitting with Johnny Pesky for 45 minutes in, in center field. Well, that's what uh, lends to greatness, I guess. Here's Kidry ready to pitch to Rice. And the big right hand about her waiting. Struck him out the first time up. Left-hander Gidry goes into action in the fourth inning. Rice swings and fouls it away. Gidry uh, set the all-time Yankee record for the most strikeouts in one season. He came into this game with 243. He picked up two in the first inning. He broke the old record set by Jack Chesbro way back when. Here's the motion now by the left-hander. And Rice swings and there's a foul fly that will reach the seats back at first. Rice leads in home runs, RBIs, slugging, hits, and triples. His home run total, the most in Boston history except for one man, Jimmy Fox, who hit 50 back in 1938. Rice swings and hits a high foul fly. It'll uh, be out of play back into the seats again. One of the strongest men you'll ever see in baseball, Jim Rice. So strong that he checked his swing one time and broke his bat. <laughs> Willie Horton did that once for the Detroit Tigers, too. But not many people do that. Here's the pitch. He swings on a ground ball shortstop. Bucky Dent grabs it. Throw to first to Chambliss. She got him. Pulled Chambliss off the bag. But Chris made a sweeping tag of the runner Rice coming down the line. And here he is, the captain. Another low ovation. Yastrzemski homered in the second inning. It was his 17th home run. It put the Red Sox in the lead, one to nothing. They've got that lead now in the fourth inning. Gidry delivers. It is a ball in close. The home run that Yaz hit was the first home run that Gidry had allowed the Red Sox all season. He delivers low. Two and oh. Uh, Gidry, a late bloomer for the Yankees a couple of years ago at Syracuse. He was ready to quit. Yep. Got in the car, headed home. His wife talked him out of it. And as he come on, here's the 2-0 pitch. Yes, yeah, swings and fouls it away. What a vicious cut he took in that one. For a man with a bad back and 39 years of age, that would open the Hall of Fame, that swing. Absolutely, and he's been suffering with a little uh, bronco trouble in the last week or so, too. <laughs> Ride him bronchial. <laughs> Here's a wind up in the pitch. He swings and hits a ground foul over toward the Boston dugout. Now these two managers are very low key. Bob Lemon of the Yankees and Don Zimmer of the Red Sox. They say, well, we're going to settle it right here. This is the way it should be. Here's the motion, the 2 2 pitch. Yaz uh, fouls another one off. That one down in the dirt. Hits him and then bounces out. Absolutely right about the manager, Zerny. Uh, Lamon says in that low voice of his, I'm, I'm lucky I'm here. 
And, and Zimmer said, uh, for the first time in my life, and I never thought it would happen, I've lost sleep. Uh, yeah. And he says, I think I'm going to lose a little bit more. 2-2 <laughs> two pitch to Yastrzemski. He swings. There's a high foul. It'll be out of play. In fact, that was a high fastball. Yeah. Carlton Fisk is waiting on deck. Boston leads one to nothing in the fourth inning at Fenway Park over the Yankees. In the one-game playoff for the title in the Eastern Division of the American League. Second time in American League history that's happened. Here's a pitch. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Carl tried to hold up, but he couldn't do it. He'd gone across. Gidry gets his third strikeout. And his first one since the first inning. You know, I just noticed, Ernie, when you're home listening to the game on the radio, every pitch is so dramatic and so tense. When you're here actually watching, seeing 180 degrees, it's not quite that tense, although it is dramatic. Now, we, we don't intend to get the folks too excited or, or too tense, but it's here. It's right here. Laid out in front of us, and the team that wins this game will win its 100th and will be on the way to Kansas City. The Royals are waiting to see uh, who they'll be playing. Here's the pitch. It is a strike above the knees. That was quite a pitch to Fisk. Fastball above the knees on the outside corner. Gidry comes at you. He looks like he's a very angular out there. All arms and legs and kicking and throwing a shoulder toward the plate. Hides the ball very well. Here's a pitch. Swung on and fouled upstairs. Two strikes on Carlton. Very quiet crowd right now. But they've had uh, plenty to yell about. They were up and shouting in the second inning when Yuskimski broke the 0-0 tie with a home run. Johnny Pesky coaches at first. Eddie Yost at third for the Boston Ball Club. Now the strike two pitch from Gidry. Swing, fly ball, center field. There goes Rivers back. It's deep. He's back there. He's waiting. He's got it on the warning track. No trouble that time with the sun or anything else. Nothing across for the Red Sox in the fourth. And we go to the fifth inning. Boston one, New York nothing. The day is done. Coming home. It's time to let it go. It's the moment to unwind. Welcome home. So just a bird. And for the king of beers. here at Fenway Park. It's the Red Sox one and the New York Yankees nothing. Each team has two hits. The only hit that's counted is Carl Yastrzemski's home run on the bottom of the second inning. The Yankees got Rivers as far as second base. A walk and a steal. He stayed there. They went down in order in the second inning. In the third inning, a two-base hit by Rivers to the right field with two outs. He got no further. In the fourth inning, a single by Pinella to open the inning, but a fly ball, two fly balls, and a ground ball, and Mike Torres has shut them out. The Red Sox have had the two hits, the homer by Yastrzemski. In the third inning, a line shot to the bottom of the wall in center field by George Scott to open the inning. He got to third and no further, and so it's one nothing as we go to the top of the Yankee fifth, and it's Roy White, Ernie. Roy White stepping in, switch batter batting left-handed. Batting a 355 over the last 23 games. He's come on strong. Mike Torres, who's blanked them so far, delivers a high fastball to Roy. Ball one. White struck out in the second inning. His only time up. Outfield a little bit to right on him. The infield back except for Brohammer, the third baseman. There's a ball down at the feet. And the count is 2-0. Oh. Torres walked the leadoff man. 
in the ball game. Rivers and then he stole second. After that, he got the next eight batters. Rivers uh, then uh, stopped that streak with a two-base hit. Munson struck out to end that inning, the third, and then uh, Fanella let out the fourth with a single, and the next three men went out. Well, that's where we are now in the fifth inning with the Red Sox leading the Yankees one to nothing. Here's the pitch. It is a ball high, fastball. Three and oh, the count on White. White spreads out at the plate, stands rather deep. Torres delivers, it is ball four, he walked him, it's the second walk, each to a leadoff man. And the third time in five innings, the Yankees have put their first man on. And as we mentioned before, Torres will come into these streaks of wildness, whether it's a lack of concentration or whatever, it's been a hallmark of his career. And here's the youngster, Brian Doyle, young man from Kentucky at the plate. Replacing the injured Randolph at second base. He's a left-handed batter. They're looking for the bunt from him. Brohammer in close. Scott will hold on the bag with White, who's a good runner. Here's the set by the right-hander Torres. And the pitch, and it is a strike call. Doyle didn't indicate that time that he was to lay the ball down. No, he didn't. And incidentally, I noticed that out on right field, Jim Rice is constantly shading his eyes as though he's having trouble following the ball. Torres checking his sign with Fisk. One to nothing, Boston leading in the fifth inning. Man on for the Yankees, nobody down. There goes White, the ball is hit on one hop to the second baseman, Remy. He flips it over to Scott, the hit and run maneuver. Gets the man to second for the Yankees. And Doyle is out on the one hopper to Remy. White taking second. And that was an easy double play ball had White not been on the way. So the Yankees playing hit and run get their man in, second, in scoring position for now the third time. And here is uh, Bucky Dent, the number nine man in the batting order, young man from Miami, who came to the Yankees from the Chicago White Sox. And he's done a good job for them at shortstop. He chokes that bat a little bit. Outfield is straight up on Bucky. Man on second is White. He's uh, checking his uh, defensive alignment out there. Set by Torres. He pitches. There's a pop-up into the infield. Going back, Burleson having trouble with the sun. He makes the catch. And Remy takes a throw from him with White getting back to second base. Two down, a man still at second. About the crowd, Ernie, when your club is ahead, even with a skinny lead like this, the home crowd stays relaxed. If they were behind, it would be edgy and you would hear a murmur. But every time the opposition gets up, listen to the murmur go through the crowd. Here's Mickey Rivers coming up now. Mickey's been on base twice. He walked to start the ball game. He doubled with two out in the third. He got the second each inning, and he was left there each time. Well, the Yankees again have a man at second base. Boston leads one to nothing. It's the fifth inning of the American League playoff game in Boston. Mickey Rivers standing forward in the batter's box, waiting. Torres delivers. Here's a ground ball to short. Grabbing it is Burleson. He throws to third to Brohammer for the out. Got him. Burleson knew that Rivers could beat out that ball probably, so he made the play at third despite the fact that there were two out. And White is the third out. White did a good job of camouflaging the direction of the ball. He's jumped in front, and it's a, a Burleson might have lost the flight of the ball entirely, so he made the one play he had. No runs, no hits, no errors. One man left. We go to the last half of the fifth inning. Red Sox won the Yankees nothing. <laughs> General Ted Arendale invites you to come see all the new 1979 Ford cars and trucks, and especially the new 1979 LTD American Road Car, with easy handling, quick, responsive steering, new suspension system, more visibility, more trunk space, more lap room, more leg room, more shoulder room, more everything for you at Ted Arendale Ford.
this is a legal ball game if um, anything should unexpectedly ha happen and there isn't a, just a few scattered clouds somewhere out there in the sky and nothing like that but we are going into the last half of the fifth each team has the two hits and it's still the one that stands up for the Red Sox Carl Yaskremski's line drive into right field, not that far on the fair side of the pole. Our position was a little difficult to position a ball, but it got in there. A good solid whack, and that's been the difference so far. The Yankees have had men in scoring position three times now. On second base, Rivers twice, and uh, Roy White that latter time. But no further has Mike Torres allowed them. And as you heard, George Scott had the double. And outside of the home run, that's all that uh, Ron Gibry has given up. He has not walked a man. And here's Fred Lynn to count the bat now against Gibry. One to nothing. The Boston Red Sox lead it. Lynn hit a fly ball to the center field of Rivers, his first trip. And Gibry delivers. Fred takes the ball outside. 40 million 610,000 plus baseball fans have paid to see Major League Baseball this year. There's a bounding foul ball down to Coach Johnny Pesky. And this crowd is capacity that will add to the total. And considering the number of seats they have here, capacity is 30,000 plus. This is a wing dinger of a baseball town. Here's the windup and they pitch a ground ball to Gidry. He gloves it. Throws over to first, and Lynn is out. Gidry down on his knees to stop that ball. He's a good fielding pitcher. And the Red Sox have one down and nobody on in the fifth inning. They lead the Yankees one to nothing on the home run by Yastrzemski in the second inning. It's been the pitchers so far who have dominated the action in this playoff game. Second playoff in American League history. right-hand batter takes a breaking pitch in above the knees. Boston won their last eight games coming into this playoff. Four of them by shutouts. Here's a ball in too close. One and one. And the Yankees over that span had won nine and lost six. Oh, the Red Sox were able to gain ground and tie the race. Here's a foul back over this way. And then down below. into the count on Hobson. Boston leads the Yankees one to nothing in the fifth inning. Gidry winds and pitches. Swing and a foul that came back and hit Munson. I think it got him on the shoulder mm, on the right arm. Being a catcher is like playing goal in hockey without sufficient equipment. Got to be able to take it. One nothing Red Sox lead fifth inning. Here's the pitch. He swings and hits a high pop-up that'll be foul and out of play. <laughs> it hit the edge of the stands, bounced up, landed on the canvas cupola above our heads. Ernie Harwell leaned out. Where'd the ball go? <laughs> Here's the wind-up now. The pitch to Hobson. He swings a ground ball to third. It is foul ball close down the line. Well, it went just to the left of the bag. I think that was an excellent call. As it got to the bag, it just ticked to the left. The ball, the bag is sitting on the line. To have hit the line, it would have had to hit the bag. That was an excellent call. Steve Palermo calling that one down there back at third base. Well, Hobson's still alive. One and two to count on the young man from Alabama. One out, nobody on Boston leading the Yankees. One to nothing on the Yastrzemski home run. We're in the fifth inning in Boston. Here's the pitch. Swing of ground ball, deep third. Nettles can't handle it. It's off his glove in the short left field. Hobson makes a big turn, holds on. White picks up the ball and flips it into the shortstop den. That was a tough chance for Nettles. We'll wait for the score. It's a single. The ball was very hard hit. The ball took a bounce that was just wrong for Nettles, who was fading back to try to trap it, and it was a legitimate hit. Well, here's a boomer, George Scott, who doubled off the wall in uh, center field. Ball that Rivers seemed to have some trouble with because of the sun.
Gidry, the left-hander, ready to go to work. one nothing Red Sox lead, fifth inning. And it is a strike called. He got a good curve in above the knees. Chambliss is holding on the bag with Hobson at first. Gidry sets and deals high and outside. One and one, the count on Scott. Here it comes. He swings and fouls it off. That got Denkinger on the mask. Oh, that was a ringer. No wonder he's bending over to clean the plate. Back in 1948, Boston and Cleveland finished the regular season with identical records. The Red Sox beat the Yankees the last two days in Fenway, and the Indians lost their finale to the Tigers to set up that playoff. And the Indians won it 8-3. to three. And this is the second time in American League history that there's been a playoff. Here's a pitch to Scott. He swings and doesn't get it. Struck him out. That time, Gidry went to his speed. That's the fourth strikeout for Gidry. He's already set the record now for the uh, Yankee pitchers. Most strikeouts in one single season. So every time he strikes out a man, these statistics are included in the official records. Here's Brohammer at the plate. And he takes the ball outside. Well, since Brohammer has not shaved and has started at third base, the Red Sox have won every game. <laughs> I don't know, uh, not necessarily in that order, you know. <laughs> one nothing. they lead here. Now Gidry delivers. It is a strike on uh, Jack. Fastball nipped the outside corner. One and one on Brohammer. Two out, man on first. The pitchers have dominated the action so far. There's a ball low and outside. They've got a shadow now that is cut across just at the front of the plate. Oh, the ball will come out of the sunshine and into the shade at the plate. That's a good song title. Out of the sunshine, into the shade. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a 2-1 pitch. He takes the ball. Low, 3-1. Well, Gidry has not been behind on many hitters. He has not issued a walk yet. Picked up four strikeouts. Now he flips one over to first. A little suspicious of Hobson over there with two out. Boston has a one-run lead, one to nothing. Here's the pitch. He swings and fouls it away. He had the green light on that one. Yep. Took a pretty good cut, but he uh, didn't uh, meet the pitch correctly. run three hits no errors for the Red Sox Yankees no runs two hits no errors Yastrzemski's homer the difference there's a pitch hit in the air to left center field white going back into left now he's there he has it and the Red Sox are out in the fifth inning no runs one hit no errors and one man left at the end of five at Fenway Park Boston one New York nothing if you've got a family you're going to be spending a lot of years in family cars so why not get one you're going to enjoy? Like a brand new Buick LeSabre. It gives you loads of room, comfort, a sense of quiet, and something very welcome these days. Value. Buick LeSabre. We didn't make it a celebrated family car. Families did. After all, life is to St. Louis. Through five here at Fenway Park. It's Red Sox one, New York Yankees nothing. And boy, this is the climax of this exciting, historic, regular baseball season. 
Who's going to forget Pete and that 300th hit, the 44-game hitting streak? Willie McCovey's 500th home run. Ron Gibry and his fantastic season. J.R. Richards and his record of strikeouts in these pennant races, of course. Baseball fever was rampant and contagious. A record 40 million fans enjoyed baseball at the ballparks. Baseball fever, aren't you glad you caught it? The preceding was brought to you on behalf of Major League Baseball. And that's a couple of Major League teams that are down there on the field this afternoon. The Red Sox and the Yankees, just the one hit separating them. The home run by Yastrzemski. A true pitcher's battle and a murmur through the crowd as the Yankee catcher and bulwark, Mr. Thurman Munson, comes to the plate. He struck out twice. What's he going to do now, Ernie Arwell? Well, I wish I knew. We'll find out soon. Torres on the mound against Munson. Munson's hit safely in the last five games. Outfield is uh, almost straight away on him now. They were a little bit to right the first couple of times up. Right-hander against the right-hander. Here's the pitch. He swings and taps a foul over toward third base. Dick Hauser, the Yankee third base coach. G. Michael coaches at first base. Yastrzemski had a home run in the second inning. That's the story of the game so far. Boston leads one to nothing in the sixth. Here's Munson uh, standing deep, waiting on uh, Mike Torres, and the right-hander fires. There's a tapper foul again toward third. Ernie, you mentioned Dick Hauser coaching at third. This could be his last game in the Yankee organization. He's leaving to become the baseball coach. I think it's Florida State University at the end of the year. Very talented man, very knowledgeable baseball man, and we certainly wish him well. Now Munson back in the batter's box, two strikes on him. One nothing Boston, sixth inning, Yankees leading off for the Munson. Here's the pitch. He swings as a foul fly to right. Rice uh, shading his eyes uh, with his uh, right hand when that ball went in the seats. Yep. On that right field, it must be getting tougher and tougher out there. Strike two count on Munson. He swings and fouls it away. That one back on the screen behind the plate. Although this is the second American League playoff, there have been uh, six in all. And as Wynn told you in his opening comments, it's always been the Dodgers uh, in the National League playoffs. Those guys always do everything to excess. They don't have them over there unless the Dodgers can get them. <laughs> <laughs> Strike two count on Munson. Torres deals again. There's a curve that is low. He checked his swing. Oh, no. And Evans said he went across. It'll be a strikeout. Den Kinger had ruled in the ball. Then the Red Sox asked for the field. And that is the fourth strikeout and the third time that Torres is fan of Munson. And uh, umpire Evans down on the first baseline made no about his motion. He went strikeout. Here's Panella. He's bounced to third and uh, single past the third baseman, Brohammer. Torres has now walked two and struck out four. He's allowed two hits. A double by Rivers and a single by Panella. Panella up again now. one nothing Boston leading sixth inning at Fenway Park in Boston. There's a fly ball at the right center field. It's deep. Lynn is going back. He's there now, waiting. He has it. Lynn gets a good jump on the ball, and he was there. That was the hardest hit ball the Yankees have had all afternoon. The dead center field, those of you who know Fenway Park, the grass circles out, and then there's a piece of pie of ground out there, and Lynn drifted back into the piece of pie, put up the arm, and took it very easily. Let's pause five seconds for stations to identify themselves on this, the CBS radio network. Here's Reggie Jackson at the bat now. Boston leads one to nothing, two out for the Yankees. They've got nobody out, nobody on in the sixth inning. Jackson is fly to left and fly to right. He takes a fast ball low. The ball uh, hits the mid of Fisk and bounds all the way up on the screen. Outfield very deep. Rice is uh, playing about where he played last time when Jackson hit a vicious line drive that carried all the way to his glove in the right field corner. Mr. Drama. 
There's a ball outside. Uh, two and no. One run, three hits for Boston. They've made no errors. The Yankees have no runs, two hits, and they've made no errors. Mike Torres trying to hold the Yankees at bay here in the latest stages of the game. Jackson not quite ready. Digs in again. Two and oh to count on Reggie. He cuts and misses. That was a low fastball. I'm not going to equate Reggie Jackson with Babe Ruth, but when I was a kid, when Babe took a cut like that and missed right here in Fenway Park, that was the most exciting thing because you knew on the next pitch, maybe. And that's what the Red Sox fans are worried about right now. And Reggie's always dealt in a sense of drama. Now the 2-1 delivery. He swings and misses. Swing himself out of the batter's box. 2-2 two, two, the count on Jackson. Reggie scraping around. Young man who uh, really went out for the baseball team in Arizona on a bet. And he made it big. Waiting on a 2-2 delivery now. Let's see what Torres will give Reggie Jackson. Two out, nobody on. The wind up the pitch. He takes the ball in close. Torres had bounced off the mound and was headed for the dugout. Yeah. But Mr. Denkinger wouldn't let him go. It is a 3-2 count. This is what makes this such a great game. The unit action where you can stop and set up this little piece of dramatic action. Reggie can make his move. He's back in there now waiting on the full count delivery. Here it comes. He swings the ground ball at the second. Remy has it. Go to Scott. Got him. Got out. One, two, three in the Yankee six. At the end of five and a half inning, the Red Sox won and New York coming. America the Mobile. You have the freedom to go where you please. But moving to another town can create certain problems, such as where to go to finance that new car or truck. Well, we're the Ford Motor Credit Company, and once you've established credit with us, you can go to any Ford or Lincoln Mercury dealer anywhere in the country. And as an established customer, your credit application will be handled quickly and conveniently. At Ford Credit, we give special consideration to individuals with unusual credit problems, to people who've just moved or started a new job. And Ford Credit is as close as your Ford or Lincoln Mercury dealer. So remember, when you're buying or leasing a new car or truck, Ford Credit wants to give you credit for being you. Tell your Ford or Lincoln Mercury dealer you'd like to finance with us. Ford Motor Credit. Nothing Red Sox as we go to the bottom of the sixth year at Fenway Park and that little bit of action it was anticlimactic that Reggie just uh, foozled the ball to second base. He should have either hit the home run or struck out. That's what it was would have made it. That's what baseball is all about. And you know what baseball is all about for the CBS Radio Network? We have one more year to go on this franchise of the All-Star Game and the World Series and it's just been announced today, Frank Miller just bent over, Bowie Kuhn and the president of network, Sam Cook digs an additional two years. It's the CBS Radio Network and Major League Baseball are going to be together for the playoffs, the series, the All-Star Games, and, and this kind of thing. And wherever you are, this is the national pastime. And if you're like me, the edge of your seat is where you are now. Ernie, you're an old dog at this. Uh, I know every day, but it still must wear you down a little. Oh, it's a thrill to be here and see this uh, pennant race come right down to the extra day. Not the final day, but the extra day. one nothing Boston, Burleson at bat, Gidry on the mound, ready to go. And the pitch on the way, he swings and doesn't get it. News, sports, and talk radio for the Metroplex. This is WFAA Dallas-Fort Worth. I'm up in the third. Gidry, left hands one toward the plate. Swing and a miss by Rick Burleson. And the count is strike two on him. Well, the difference in this game is one pitch so far, that home run by Yastrzemski in the second inning. 
is a high foul that will drift into the seats on the first base side. Strike two, the count on Burleson leading it off. Remy will be on deck, and Jim Rice will follow. Gidry winds and deals. Ground ball foul down past Ed Yost. The old walking man didn't walk after that one. He let it go. Here's the motion. Gidry pitches. There's a foul out of play in the seats to the right of the screen. Check swing on a fastball. Gidry is sort of a meat and potatoes pitcher. He just uh, throws hard. He's got a good slider, and that's it. He gets the ball over, and he challenges the hitters. Here it comes. He delivers low in the dirt. One ball, two strikes. And that one run uh, begins to loom a little larger as the game moves along. Sixth inning now, Red Sox batting. They lead one to nothing over the Yanks. Gidry kicks and pitches. Here's a foul out of play. Burleson is about as much of a battler as you'll see at the plate. You called him a rooster. Well, that's what Don Zimmer called him. He hit him a lot of ground balls in spring training. The guy kept missing him, and he stayed in there, and he... Don said, that guy's a little rooster. Here's a base hit to left field. Down the corner, off the wall. Ricochet played by White. Burleson going for two. He has a stand-up double. That's the second double by Boston. The other one belonged to Scott. They got him to third, but couldn't get him home. Burleson is now 5 for 12 against Gidry. He's the only Boston batter who's had any real success against this uh, great late Yankee left-hander. Ernie, let's see how they're going to play it. Uh, Zimmer is a one-game-at-a-time manager, and so far he's been a one-run-at-a-time manager. Previously, when Scott made the, the opening, the inning with the second baseman, he bunted him along, and the Red Sox died. Now it's Remy. Let's see what is he going to do. And you've got a man up there who can bunt well. They're looking for the bunt. He squares. He does not offer. It's a pitch low. Chambliss is charging in from first. Nettles got to be that swinging door again at third. Yeah. Get back in case somebody else feels the ball. Dent will try to keep the man uh, Burleson close at second. There's another pitch outside. He looked as if he might be ready to bunt. And Rich Gossage, the goose, is throwing in the Yankee bullpen. Boston one, Yankees nothing. Uh, sixth inning at Fenway Park in Boston. Red Sox have a man at second, Burleson, and nobody out. Gidry delivers. Here's a bot toward third. Nettles has to field it. The throw will be the first to Chambliss. Sacrifice gets Burleson over to third. A perfect sacrifice punt by Remy. Jim Rice. Jim Rice, the number one hitter on this ball club, facing Gidry, and we've got two men here who are considered uh, the prime candidates for the most valuable player award, facing each other right now. Oh, boy, this is it, isn't it? Infield in tight. Man at third is Burleson, and the pitch. Rice swings and doesn't get it. He fouled it away, back of the plate. Rice is struck out and bounced to shortstop. So Gidry so far has the upper hand against him. Most valuable pitcher against most valuable hitter. And Rice is the first player in history to lead the majors in home runs, RBIs, and triples in a single season. The pitch, swing, line drives to the field. Rivers can't get it, plays it on one hop, the run will score. And Boston leads 2 to nothing on the single by Jim Rice. Played it short on the hop, and that is 139 runs batted in now for Jim Rice. And that one might be one of the biggest ones uh, that he comes up with. 
Here's Dostoevsky who homered in the second inning for the other Boston run. And he takes the ball outside. Second time at bat, Yaz yeah, struck out. Gidra looking back at Dent to see where he's going to play now. One on, one out. Red Sox have added to their lead. They lead it two to nothing over the Yankees in the sixth inning. And the pitch. Swing and a miss. Outfield is to right and deep on uh, Yastrzemski. And the infield and double play depth. Yankees would like to get that ground ball to short a second. Rice trying to get a lead at first base. Chambly is holding on the bag. Gidry delivers. It is a ball outside, a curve. Two and one, the count on Yastrzemski. Yes, wants uh, umpire Don Denkinger to inspect the baseball. Don uh, runs out there about halfway and says it's okay. Fisk is the next Boston batter. Yastrzemski has a little more territory to hit into between Chambliss and Doyle with the Chambliss holding on the bag with Rice. Here's the pitch. He takes a wide one. That was a breaking ball. Three and one. The count on Yan. Well, let's keep an eye on Rice to see whether he's sent on this pitch or not. For the three-one count on Yastrzemski. Two-nothing. Boston leading. One man out. It's the sixth inning. Here's the set by the Yankee left-hander. Rice doesn't go. The pitch is swung on and missed. Bad pitch. Low and outside. Looked like a breaking ball. Tension. I tell you, things are so tense, Gossage has stopped warming up there to watch the action. And then every once in a while, he'll throw a ball. Now, Yaz uh, very carefully resettling himself in the batter's box. 3-2 count. One out. There goes Rice. The pitch is swung on a ground ball to Chambliss. He'll have to make the play unassisted at first. The hit-and-run maneuver moves Rice into second on the bounce out to first base. That means two down, a Red Sox player, Rice, at second base, and Fisk will be the batter. Boston ahead, 2-0. Bob Lemon has come out to speak to Gidry now. As the batter is the right-hander, Carlton Fisk, who hit a long fly ball to center field in his previous time at bat. And it's possible that Bob, being an old pitcher himself, detects a slight hitch in the mechanics of Gidry's pitching. That's the first giveaway. You know your pitcher well enough. You know what his motions are. You call him the mechanics. Does he bring his hand to the accustomed spot? Is he letting the ball go where he should? Evidently, Lemon is satisfied. Probably they just wanted to talk about the possibility of putting Fisk on or not, certainly not giving him anything too good because following uh, Carlton is the left-handed batter of the center fielder of the Red Sox, Lynn. Whatever it is, they've decided to go for broke. And we've got that shadow now we were talking about earlier that's uh, cut across in front of the plate. It's about halfway toward the mound. And they're going to put uh, Fisk on intentionally in this situation and pitch to the left-hand batting Fred Lynn. Also set up a force out. There are two out, a man on second, ball one outside on Fisk. Here's the second one intentionally wide to Carlton. He's not going to get a chance to swing the bat in this situation. Boston has two runs, five hits. The Yankees have no runs and two hits. There's ball three outside. Oh, it's just a matter of one more pitch, and the Red Sox will have a couple of men on base and two out. And there is the fourth one, so he'll trot down to first base, and now it'll be between Gidry and Lynn, a couple of left-handers. That's the first walk-off Gidry. And a deliberate. And deliberate. And as Fred Lynn walked to the plater, and he said, I want to see that ball. I don't think he thinks that Gidry did anything with it. <laughs> I think he's not quite sure of Thurman Munson. Well, he wants to be sure that somebody didn't do anything with it. <laughs> and if Don Sutton is listening out there in L.A. <laughs> well, Lynn's not hit very well against Gidry. Uh, one uh, for eight trips so far. Left-hander against the left-hander. Two men on, two men out. And Lynn picks a fastball low from Ron Gidry. Feel almost straight away on Freddie. They bunched him toward the middle here. Here's a foul fly to left. The slicing drive 
down toward the corner, but in the seats. Lynn can hit the ball down left field and often has gone over the wall with it. Meaning in waiting now. Gidry delivers 1-1 one, one to Lynn. He swings. There's a roll of foul. That's the first base coach, Johnny Pesky. Johnny chasing that one down. There's a guy that's done it all. Oh, yeah. boy starting out. Mm -hmm. Player. Manager in the minors. Manager in the major leagues. Radio TV. Coach. One and two of the call on win. Let's see what we'll get down with two men on and two men out from Gidry. Here it comes. He backed him off with an inside fastball. Well, two balls, two strikes, two out and two on. Did you mention that Freddie hasn't shaved in quite a while, too? Yeah, that's true. Here's the pitch. It is outside. Ooh, three and two. Something has to happen now. Three and two with two on and two out. Two nothing, Boston. They're batting in the sixth inning against Gidry. Brad Lynn waiting. Swing, there's a fly ball to right. It's deep. Manella going back, 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 back. And he makes the catch. A good running catch by Panella. Deep in the right field corner. With the runners moving on two out, he hauled it in. And into the sunlight, too. A terrific catch under the circumstances. One run on two hits. There were no errors. Two runners are left at the end of six. Boston, two. The Yankees, nothing. When do you think? St. Louis. The new 1979 Buick Regal. It's not only good looking, it's smooth riding, V6 powered, and Buick's most popular car. The roomy, luxurious new Regal. It isn't just a car you're going to like, it's a car you're going to love. And if there was ever a time to have a car this nice, it's now. Six. The game is two-thirds over at Fenway Park, and it's Boston 2, Yankees nothing. A home run by Yastrzemski, a run-scoring single by Jim Rice. And all this a prelude, of course, to the upcoming World Series. The playoffs first in each division in each league in the World Series on October 10th, the Diamond Jubilee year for the series, the 75th anniversary. And you're going to hear all the action. CBS Radio Sports live coverage on most of these stations. The World Series, the piece de resistance, again this year on CBS, your number one radio network for news, program, and sports. No mistakes to be allowed in the last three innings now. Either team, either pitcher, it'll cost them. The Red Sox have the lead. They've had it since the second inning. The Eskrimski home run and then the run that was chipped in in this past inning. Burleson's double and Rice cashed him in with a hard single. Ernie, the top of the seventh. And Greg Nettles will lead it off for the Yankees as the pressure mounts here in the final three innings. And the attendance has been announced, 32,925. Gives the Red Sox 2,320,643 total for the season. Here's Nettles waiting on Torres. He's popped up twice to shortstop. And he takes a strike. That was a breaking ball that got the inside corner above the knees. Nettles has reached base in each of the last 13 games, but not in this one. Now, Torres slowing up on his pitching face, gets his sign. He winds and delivers. There's a high fly ball, hit the right field. Rice is shading his eyes from that tough sun. He's under it. He has it. And there's one away. That will bring up Chris Chambliss, the Yankee first baseman, who has lined a first and hit into a force out. Rice started the year as a D.H. Um, Ernie, and scarcely getting into the game except as a batter, but he's acquitted himself very well this latter third of the season. Here's Chris at the plate now with one out in the seventh. 
Torres uh, kicks and delivers. Here's a swing and a miss. Strike one on Chambliss. Outfield deep to right. Two runs, five hits for Boston. No runs and two hits for New York. Here's a base hit to left field. He reached out and punched the line single in the left. Oh, the Yankees got a man on in the seventh inning. On a one-out single by Chambliss. That is their third hit. And the batter will be Roy White. Beautiful bat control after swinging at a ball that got by him before he swung. He just put that bat out and punched it in the left field. White has struck out and walked over 23 games, hitting 355. Coming on strong toward the end of the year. Broham is wide of the bag at third and about even with it. They've got the Burleson pulled over near second to his left. There's a line shot up the middle, a base hit. Chambliss turning at second base. He holds there as Lynn fires the ball behind him to Remy. And the Yankees are in business now. The first time they put two men on in an inning. They've got runners at first and second and one away. The tying runs are on the bases. We're going to get a pinch hitter, I think, for the young second baseman, Doyle. He's heading back to the bench. And a conference at the mound among the three Boston players, Fisk, Burleson, and Torres talking over the situation. That's Bucky dead on deck. He's the next batter. And I believe this is Jim Spencer. Let's uh, wait a minute and be sure. Don Denkinger signals that uh, he's in the ball game, and it'll be Jim Spencer. Right. Left hand batting first baseman, D.H. Fellow with a lot of power. Spencer hitting 228, seven home runs, 24 runs batted in. And this will be the first lineup change by either manager. Well, the old reliables for the Yankees, Chambliss and White coming up with back to back singles. As a pinch batter, Spencer is hitting uh, 304 this year, seven for 23. Well, here comes Don Zimmer out. The Red Sox have had their bullpen busy. Hassler for one. Probably uh, Stanley for the other one. Well, we'll put the glasses on him and see. Conference going on. Zimmer still talking with Torres and with the Fisk. Brohammer tuned in there now. It's Stanley and Hassler out there. That's right. Stanley has done a great job. Hassler, the acquisition from uh, California. Well, Zimmer are going to ride the rapids here in the seventh inning with Torres, who has pitched a strong game. No runs and four hits. The Yankees have put together back to back singles in the seventh with one away. And Jim Spencer batting for Brian Doyle. Jim not quite ready. He's trying to dig in up there. Young man from Maryland. Stands uh, deep with his feet close together. The infield will be in double play depth against him. And the outfield around to right. And this is a big moment in the ball game right here. Here's a set. Here's a pitch. He swings and fouls it away to the screen. Boston got a run in the second inning on a home run by Carl Yastrzemski. They led one to nothing until the last half of the sixth when they scored again on a double by Burleson, a sacrifice by Remy, and an RBI single by Rice. And now the Yankees are kicking up their heels for the first time. They've got a man at first and a man at second and one away. Three times prior to this, the Yankees have had a man at second base. First two times, it was Mickey Rivers. Takes his time on the mound. Spencer waiting on a strike one delivery. He takes the ball in close. One and one the count on Jim. Scott playing very deep at first. And here in the seventh inning, he'll have to guard the line. He figures if anything's going to be hit by him, it should be hit to his right. Not to the foul line side. Here's the set. Here's the pitch. It is a ball low, a curveball, two and one. And again, I notice on every pitch, Jim Rice in right field shades his eyes. 
a line drive to that area, I think it would be very difficult to pick up. Panella did a great job uh, catching that ball to end the sixth inning. Very difficult play for Lou. Uh, Therese scraping around, doing some groundkeeping out there in front of the slab. Spencer digging in to wait on a 2-1 delivery. Shamless at second, White at first. Here's the set, here's the pitch. He swings, fly ball, left field. Should be caught. Yastrzemski there, has it, and the runners hold on. Spencer is out on the fly to left to Yastrzemski. And the batter will be the ninth man on the shortstop, Bucky Dent. And Bucky was one of the real stalwarts in the Yankee drive. He's not a home run hitter. It doesn't mean to say he can't get it over this wall. But he he was a very timely hitter, especially in the series where the Red Sox lost those six out of seven. He's taking his time getting in there against Torres. Two out, two on, two nothing. Boston leads the Yanks. Seventh inning at Fenway Park in Boston. White, the runner at first base. Scott will play behind him. And at second is Chambliss. Against the Red Sox, Dent has batted to 314 this year. 241 against everybody. There's a half swing, and it is ruled the ball. He didn't go through on that one. Checked his swing on a low one. Mike Torres wanted everybody to be sure and know it was two outs. He signaled Burleson. Burleson signaled Yastrzemski. Remy at second, thought, thought he saw a pebble about four feet in front of him, walked up and kicked it out of his way. It's oh, the little things matter now. They sure do. Two nothing Boston. Two out, two on. There's a tap foul up his foot. And he's hurting. Uh, Dent's had a lot of trouble with his uh, ankles and feet over the last couple of years. For most of this year, in fact, Ernie, uh, Bucky has worn a guard on his left, right where he is uh, palpating it now, just above the ankle. He hurt it early in the year. He wore uh, like a soccer shin guard that the kids wear, and now evidently he's hit it again. And he is in some pain, and as you see, when he puts weight on the foot, he grimaces and he, he's feeling gimpy. That's exactly where he got it early in the year. In fact, he had he was out. Then he got a hamstring. Right. That was in a series of unfortunate injuries that the Yankees had in the middle of the year that they went into a tailspin. And then as though to accommodate the Yankees, the Red Sox had seven guys on the gimp list. Hobson with his chips and his knees. Uh, Rice hit his foot. Yaz in the back. Uh, Burleson jammed the foot on the last game before the All-Star game. For a while, it was uh, who's on the field and who's in the hospital for both clubs. And now Bucky seems to have recovered at least well enough to get in the batter's box. And the tension starts again. There's still two Yanks on. Well, they got some methyl chloride. Uh, freeze them stop on that uh, ankle. He's back in there choking the bat, waiting on a 1-1 pitch from Torres. Two men on, two men out, 2 nothing Boston. And the pitch on the way. He swings. There's a fly ball to left field. Yastrzemski looking back. And that Homer. one is gone. A free run homer for Bucky Dent. And the Yankees have the lead. Just into the screen. Bucky Dent hits a free run homer for the Yankees. And they go out in front of the Boston Red Sox here at Fenway Park. That one got in the screen by a couple of feet. As Yastrzemski could do nothing but look up. And watch it drift in there. And the Yankees, after trailing two to nothing, take the lead at three to two in the seventh inning. That's the fifth home run of the year for Bucky Dent. And that was a typical Fenway Park home run. Up under the sky, the wind slightly to left field, and it just found the netting maybe five to ten feet on the fair side of the foul line. Here's Mickey Rivers up now, and he swings and bows it away over into the seats. Well, with one blow, the game has turned around completely. A three-run homer by Bucky Dent. After hitting that ball down on his foot, getting back in there, getting treatment, he lofted one into the screen in left field, and the Yankees lead it. There's a ball in close on Mickey Rivers. And this big crowd, very silent now, with the Yankees in the lead by one. It is a strike on the inside corner. 
Rivers will walk a double and uh, safe on the field is choice. The Yankees striking uh, suddenly here. Here's the pitch. It's low. Well, they used to say the Yankees were 5 o'clock lightning. It's a little before that right now, but almost around 4.30. Mm -hmm. 31 minutes early. They lead it 3-2. to two. Here's the 2-2 two, two delivery. Swing and a little tapper rolling down the first base side. It'll go foul. Oh, and Fisk almost uh, let it roll back into fair territory, but he picked it up before it did. Uh, Rivers will have to come on back now. The key play of this game may well turn out to be Fred Lynn's long fly ball to right field. It would have been a home run in Yankee Stadium. But Pinella fighting the sun and the ball got it. And then in this Yankee half of the seventh inning, the fly ball to left field, that would have been an easy out in Yankee Stadium, puts the uh, Bronx Bombers in the lead. Makes a difference where you play. Three to two, the Yankees in the lead over the Boston Red Sox in the seventh. Here's a pitch by Torres. Rivers takes the ball low. With one out in this inning, Chambliss single, White single, then after the pinch to Spencer, fly to left. Dent hit the three-run homer. Waiting on a full count delivery now. Mickey Rivers. Here it comes. He swings and fouls it out the mid of Carlton Fisk. Still alive at three and two. Gossage working in the Yankee bullpen. Now the check of the sign by Torres. He pitches. Rivers takes a walk. It was in close. The third walk issued by Mike. And we're going to get a change here. Don Zimmer has uh, come out of the dugout. And it will be Bob Stanley, the right-hander, to take over. That's going to be all for Therese, who was the victim of the home run pitch that he uh, threw to Bucky Dent. Then after that, he issued a walk to Mickey Rivers on three and two. And the Yankees have a three to two lead with a man on and two down. If you joined us late, the Red Sox jumped out into the lead against Ron Guidry in the second inning when Carl Yastrzemski hit a line drive home run into the right field stand. They added a run in the bottom of the sixth as Mike Torres leaves to the applause of the Fenway Park throng here. The Red Sox got another run in the sixth and end in this incomplete seventh inning as you just heard the two singles and the 315-foot fly ball down the left field foul line off the bat of Bucky Dent has made it 3-2. And as we change pitches here with this slight delay, let's take a brief update from CBS News in New York. CBS News, Douglas Edwards reporting on the CBS radio network. President Carter has invited Egypt and Israel to send delegations to Washington October 12th to negotiate a Middle East peace treaty with the full U.S. partner in the talks. HEW Secretary Califano says he'll urge the president to veto a $1 billion tuition tax credit bill for college students. The Supreme Court has refused to reconsider a ruling allowing police with warrants to make surprise searches of newsrooms and other places where no one is suspected of a crime. Thousands of mourners braved a steady downpour in Vatican City to pay their last respects to Pope John Paul I. He'll be buried on Wednesday. An unexplained landslide of two hours' duration has caused streets to collapse in a three-block area of Laguna Beach, California, damaging or destroying at least 25 homes, but no injuries are reported. The Dow Jones Industrial Average at closing up five and a half points. Douglas Edwards, CBS News, now back to Boston. Back in Fenway Park, two outs. Ricky, Mickey Rivers on first base, the batter, Thurm Munson earning. And uh, Bob Stanley, the new pitcher, the native of Portland, Maine, who has won 15 games and lost two. He's been a relieving uh, stalwart for Don Zimmer's ball club. Munson trying to keep it going for the Yankees. They've rallied to take the lead at 3-2. to two. They've got Rivers, a runner, over their first base. And he draws a throw and gets back uh, on a close one, but he's safe. Rivers has been on base uh, every time. One time on a fielder's choice, twice on a walk, and once on a double. Now edges off again. Here's the throw by Stanley. He's back safely. Bucky Dent is at a three-run homer here in the seventh for New York to put him in front. 
Yastrzemski had homered in the second. The Red Sox had picked up another run on a race single in the sixth inning. And then the Yanks exploded here in the seventh. Here's the set by Stanley. Rivers goes. The pitch is swung on miss. Throw by Fisk into second. He is safe. Well, Rivers has another stolen base. Throw by Carlton Fisk on one hop to Remy. That's five for five now. Against the Red Sox for Mickey Rivers. In the stolen base department. He puts himself in scoring position with two down. Fisk wants to go out and talk with his new pitcher, Bob Stanley. One strike the count on Thurman Munson. Munson has struck out three times. Torres went six and two-thirds innings. He's allowed three runs. That man at second belongs to him. Given up five hits, three walks, and four strikeouts. Yanks lead it 3-2, seventh inning in Boston. Munson waiting. Here it comes. He swings. There's a line drive left center field. It'll be up the alley. Rivers coming around third. He'll score. Liam bubbles the ball momentarily. On to second goes Munson, and the throw comes into the third baseman, Brohammer. And the Yankees add to their lead. They now lead it 4-2 to two over the Red Sox. Smash the bat and brought home the run. That'll be a two-bagger. He even had that man field of the ball cleanly. Munson probably would have made second. The run scores. Rivers are romping home. And the Yankees with a four-run surge in the seventh have taken the lead 4-2. to two. Here's Lou Pinello with one for three. And that's a big leaguer, Thurman Munson. Three strikeouts. But he had it when it counted. Two out, a man on second. Here's Pinello waiting on uh, Stanley's delivery. There's a fly ball to right. Rice is going back. He's there. And he makes the catch to retire the side. The Yankees come up with four big ones. Four runs on four hits. No errors. One man left. We go to the last half of the seventh inning in Boston. The Yankees four, the Red Sox two. The new Buick Century. A practical mid-size car with a remarkably large size inside. A car that gives you an astonishing amount of front and rear seat legroom and a whole lot more. In the form of Buick Ride. Quiet and comfort. Buick 79 Century. It's good common sense and good clean fun. After all, life is too empty. St. Louis. There'll be a new second baseman for the New York Yankees as we go into the bottom of the seventh inning. The Red Sox have a rooster in Burleson. The Yankees have a chicken in Fred Stanley. That is his affectionate nickname in the uh, Bronx dugout. Fred Stanley has taken over his second base and Bob Lemon taking no chances. He saw what happened to the Red Sox two-run lead. He's got Rich Gossage up and still going in the bullpen in right field for the Yankees. And so we come to the last of the seventh, and the Red Sox, who had led by two, now trail by two. And taking the batter's box, the designated hitter, young Mr. Hobson. But you're about ready to step in there. Gidry behind uh, the uh, slab now gets up, starts to scrape around with his spikes. Yankees with a two-run margin with the Red Sox batting in the last half of the seventh inning. Here's a wind-up by the left-hander, and Hobson swings and doesn't get it. Strike one. Hobson has bounced the third and single. Gidry into the motion delivers. Here's a foul to the screen. Strike two on Butch Hobson. Torres' record is complete now that the inning is over. Six and two-thirds innings. He gave up four runs on the five hits. He struck out four and walked three. 
Red Stanley at uh, second base playing deep on uh, Hobson. All the infielders are back. Now uh, Gidry ahead of the hitter. Two strikes on him. Goes into action. Pitches. It is a ball outside. Boston scored first. A home run by Yastrzemski in the second. A single by Rice in the sixth inning. Drove in their second run. And then the Yankees came back with four in the seventh. He swings and misses. Struck him out. That is the fifth strikeout for Gidry. And the batter will be Scott, George Scott, with a double and a strikeout in two turns at bat. Gidry on the ropes in the sixth inning win, but he hung in there and got him out. And now he's trying to do it in the seventh, eighth, and ninth. Here's Scott at the plate. One down, nobody on. Uh, George swings on a bounding ball to right. It's a hit. Round single between Stanley and Chambliss in the right field off the bat of Scott. For the second hit this afternoon for the Boomer. Bailey has been at the on-deck circle. Now here comes uh, Bob Lemon, the Yankee manager out. He's had Gossage as Wynn told you, throwing in the bullpen. And he makes the signal. He wants uh, a reliever. For Ron Guidry. But the man at first and one away. I was about to mention about Guidry. He seems to have an um, idiosyncrasy where he refurbishes his spirit, much like Al Roboski. He goes behind the pitching mound, faces out the second base, sort of clenches his feet together and his hands, then turns and very deliberately goes on the mound and then makes his pitch. Well, we won't see him do that anymore this afternoon. That signal to right field by uh, George Scott has brought Bob Lemon out and Ron Guidry out. And he so leaves, having pitched six and one-third inning, allowing two runs and six hits, five strikeouts, and one walk, an intentional walk in this latter inning to Carlton Fitz. And coming in is the off-season free agent acquisition by the New York Yankees, Rich Gossage. And the circle has come full turn. The Yankees went for Gossage because he's younger, and they feel they feel that the the future is relief pitchers. They could have had Mike Torres because they had him. They could have kept him, but instead of giving the money to Torres, they let him go and they brought Gossage in. And now, with what eight batters left for the Red Sox? The payoff, or not, as it seems, is to unfold directly in front of us. Rich has had 26 saves this year in the American League. Nine of them in his last 14 games, uh, which also includes two wins. He's given up just three earned runs in his last 15 appearances. A 1.11 ERA, and he's allowed just not seven earned runs in his last 25 appearances. Well, appearances can be deceiving, as Bob Stanley found out on that first pitch to Thurman Munson, which brought in the fourth New York Yankee run. Stanley has equally gaudy statistics. He's won 15 and lost two, and at the beginning of the year wasn't even sure of his job. He has been the biggest surprise of this year, as Gidry was last year. And now, the Red Sox crowd here at Fenway Park begins to murmur as Gossage takes his position on the mound and the pinch hitter, Bob Bailey, Ernie. Bob batting 194, four homers and nine RBIs. And he takes them all outside from the big hard-throwing right-hander, Rich Gossage. Uh, Don Zimmer wants to try to get that long ball in there now. Bob Bailey, the uh, veteran, 35 years old, from California waiting, and the pitch is swung on and fouled away. One and one, the count on Bailey. Scott on first. Yankees lead the Red Sox, four to two in the seventh inning. Each of the starters now out of the ball game. Here's a pitch. He takes a strike right through the middle above the knees. Outfield deep and straight away. Bailey likes a high ball, Ernie, and if he does... Here's the one-two pitch to him. And he took the strike called right through the heart of the plate. He's called out on strikes. So Bailey, the pinch hitter, looked at a third strike and walked slowly back to the dugout. 
The batter will be Burleson. Burleson against the start at Guidry had a double in the sixth inning. Prior to that, he uh, struck out and bounced to third. Man on first, two down. Boston trailing the Yankees four to two. Gossage is 0-1 against Boston this year with an ERA of 2.86. Burleson looks at a strike on the inside corner. Jerry Remy waiting on deck for Boston. Red Sox uh, leading this game ever since the second inning when Yastrzemski homered. But the Yankees erupted with four in the seventh and they've taken the lead. Four to two. There's a strike call. Gossage going to that fastball and keeping it over and low. the right-handed checks his sign with his catcher Munson works again. A curve off the mid of Munson. Scott will take second base. I'll tell you, Ernie, in the appearances that Gossage has had against the Red Sox in that uh, rain curtail game, uh, he threw away two balls. The Red Sox had been trailing 5 nothing. They kept chipping away. Gossage came in and a couple of wild pitches. He pitched them into a tie game that was uh, curtailed by the uh, curfew, and the Red Sox eventually won it. Well, Rice on second now. The uh, scorer says that one's a pass ball. The one-two pitch swung on the ground ball to short. Dent charges, has it, is a throw to Chambliss. He got him, and Boston is out in the seventh inning. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one man left. And at the end of seven, the Yankees four, Red Sox two. A new way of life is waiting for you. If you have not yet discovered the motorhome way, you owe it to yourself to find out. Come into Holiday Lincoln Mercury in Fort Worth, Tarrant County's exclusive headquarters for Winnebago Motor Homes. The new 79 Winnebagos are now on display. A Winnebago will bring your doorstep to the mountains, the seashores, the historic sites, the streams and woods for fishing or hunting. A Winnebago can be your luxury condominium on wheels, where you entertain friends from coast to coast. A Winnebago takes you to baseball or football games, or wherever the crowds assemble. And you will never have to worry about motel vacancies or crowded restaurants. It's a whole new way of life. Leisurely, convenient, luxurious. Life in a Winnebago. See the new 79 Winnebagos today. In Fort Worth at Holiday Lincoln Mercury. Forest Park Boulevard at the West Freeway. A new third baseman for the Boston Red Sox in the person of Duffy. Uh, Duffy normally a second and short, but he now takes over third because of the pinch hitting of Bob Bailey or the lack of pinch hitting for Bob Bailey by, uh, for uh, Brewhammer. And now, Ernie, as the shadows have spread out way beyond the pitcher's mound, I would say it's even Steven. The uh, batters uh, have as much to say about where the ball is going to be seen as the pitcher. Absolutely. And the only Yankee who did not bat in the seventh inning will lead it off in the eighth for them, Reggie Jackson. Reggie and Carlton Fisk engaged in a conversation right now down at home plate. Uh, Duffy is now playing third, uh, replacing Brohammer. Four runs, six hits for the Yankees. Two runs, six hits for Boston. It's the eighth inning in the playoff game at Fenway Park. Reggie Jackson leading it off for the Yankees. Bob Stanley, the reliever, delivers, and it is a ball outside on Reg, ball one. Six Yankee hits by six different batters. The big one, the three-run homer by Bucky Dent in the seventh inning that put the Yanks in front. There's a wide one, a two and all, the count on Reggie Jackson. Bob Lemon is not taking any chances. Jim Beatty is warming up in the Yankee bullpen, and uh, Bergmeier is warming up in the Red Sox bullpen. Here's the windup, and the pitch It's fouled away. Two and one, the count on Jackson. Very still and a quiet crowd at Fenway right now with the Yankees leading 4-2. to two. Stanley checks his sign with Fisk, ready to go to action again. Wind up the pitch, Jackson swings, high fly ball, deep center. Lynn going back, 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 and that one is gone! A home run for Jackson. In the center field seats, it is 5-2, favor of New York, as the Yankees going to their old trademark, the home run. 
to amass a lead here at Fenway in the playoff game. That ball hit by Reggie straight away, a towering fly ball in the center field bleachers. As Jackson went back to the bench, I presume that's George Steinbrenner sitting right to the left of the Yankee dugout. He reached over and they gave the I slap you in happiness type greeting. <laughs> Well, it's a different greeting for Bob Stanley. His manager, Zimmer, goes out and uh, tells him that he is finished for the afternoon. The home run by Jackson, the telling blow, and Hassler will be brought in now, the left-hander, to pitch against the Yankees, the third baseman and left-hand batter Nettles here in the eighth inning. Well, the Yanks have exploded with four runs in the seventh inning, one here in the eighth, three of those four runs in the seventh on the home run by Bucky Dent. And the leadoff home run by Jackson, knocking Stanley, the second Boston pitcher, from the mound. Right, Ernie, I've had the glasses on that box. Not that it's important, but it is George Steinbrenner. And standing up there is a guy who used to play third base for the Cleveland Indians by the name of Al Rosen. And it was they who greeted Jackson as he came to the Yankee dugout after finding the center field bleachers to give the Yankees the 5-2 to two lead. They say the Yankees are money players. Well, I don't, I don't go along with that because the money these guys make these days, it actually costs them money to play in a postseason game. So they're not playing for the money. It's playing for pride. Last night, after having lost to the Indians, somebody asked Reggie, are you tired? And he said, mentally, yes, I am tired. Physically, I could walk to Boston and still get there in time for the game. Well, early in this game, he didn't uh, appear at his best. Uh, Torres was much too much for him the first time. Got him on a fly ball to left, a fly ball to right, then a ground ball. And then, as he did in the latter part of the sixth game against the Dodgers in Yankee Stadium, he just uh, cinched up his britches and he caught that ball. Oh, it was right over the center of the plate. Actually, it was curving to the left as it found the bleachers. Had it curved a little more, it would have bounced off the wall some 400 feet away. And Bob Stanley, who's had such a brilliant year for the Red Sox, 15-2, and two, was on his way to a no-hitter just the other day against the Blue Jays. Uh, the Red Sox got him enough runs so that um, manager Zimmer could take him out, even though he was on his way to the no-hitter, uh, no uh, has failed in his relief appearance today. There is just no accounting for um, pitch by pitch, inning by inning, game by game. And right now, the Yankees, 5-2, to two, last uh, top of the eighth. And this uh, crowd almost in sun stunned silence here at Fenway, with Nettles uh, facing the new pitcher, Hasler. He has a 3-5 and five record. He's 0-0 against the Yanks. Trying to keep his uh, team in the ball game. 5-2, to two, the Yankees lead in the eighth inning. Here's Nettles at the plate on the left-hander delivers. Here's a foul out of play in the dirt over toward the screen. Five runs, seven hits, no errors for New York. Boston, two runs, six hits, and no errors. Nettles has popped twice to short and fly to right. Now the motion by Hassler. He delivers. It is a check swing, and that is ruled a ball by umpire Denkinger. Nope, he gets an appeal from Palermo, and Palermo says he went across, so it will be a strike. That's the second time the appeal from the plate umpire has resulted in a swing decision. Five to two, the Yankees lead it in the eighth. Strike to the count on Greg Nettles. Here's the wind up in the pitch. Ooh, he moved him back with a high, tight pitch. One ball and two strikes. Of course, no matter what happens here this afternoon, it's a prelude to what's going to happen in Kansas City tomorrow. Tomorrow night, Kansas City against whichever of these two teams wins this. Here it comes. Nettles looks at a ball outside. 2-2 two -two to count on him now. Well, they're just waiting. I imagine the Royal fans are feeling pretty good. They would like the Yankees, I think. I'd, they'd like to get them. Well, they've had them twice and didn't get them. Well, so that's why like they get them. <laughs> yeah. Nettles waiting on a 2 2 delivery. Here it comes. He swings and misses. Struck him out on a high, hard one. Hassler coming in, strikes out Nettles. And now here's Chris Chambliss. 
Well, the Yankee first baseman at the plate. Outfield deep to right on Chris. Left-hander against the left-hander. Hassler delivers. There's a bounding ball to right. It'll be a stop by Remy. Throw to first. He got him. What a play. He took that one out of the hit column in a hurry. Remy dived to his left and came up with a brilliant get on the grass in right field. Through to Scott. Chambliss putting up an argument with umpire Evans. And now Michael takes it up. But uh, Chambliss is robbed of the hit by Remy. And Chambliss thinking better of it, having a three-run lead, heads to the Yankee dugout. Don Zimmer doesn't think this game is over. He's got Bergmeier throwing out there, and he's got Drago throwing out there. Well, here's Roy White at the plate. Gene Michael still uh, continuing his argument with umpire Evans back at first base. Feels straight away. Roy White batting right-handed this time. And he taps one up the middle. Remy waits for the hop. Has it over to Scott. In time to get Roy by a step and a half. And uh, Hassler comes in and does the job. But the home run by Jackson. One run, one hit. No error. Nobody left. We go to the last half of the eighth inning at Fenway Park. Yankees five, Red Sox two. Here's Bubba Clymer, General Sales Manager of Texas Motors Ford at the exit of I-20 in Cherry Lane, West Fort Worth. Texas Motors Ford is the home of the push pull or drag deal. That old car truck that you've got sitting around the house could be worth some big money to you. Push it, pull it, or drag it to Texas Motors Ford. For instance, your trade-in car or truck is worth $1,500 off the list price on any 1978 Ford pickup or van in stock, excluding couriers, please. Your trade-in car or truck is worth $800 off the list price on any 1978 Futura in stock. Your trade-in car or truck is worth $500 off the list price on any 1978 Pinto or Fiesta in stock. Push-pull or drag deals apply on every car or truck, new or used, on the lot. Check the Star Telegram for more weekly specials. This is Bubba Climber reminding you that where you buy is as important as what you buy. Remember, all Fords are created equal. Texas Motors Ford makes the difference. Texas Motors Ford at the exit of I-20 in Cherry Lane in West Fort Worth. These deals good on all 78 and 79 models at Texas Motors Ford. And so we come to the bottom of the eighth with the Yankees leading 5-2 to two in this most improbable of baseball years. Greg Nettle said before the game, they've got the home field advantage, we've got the pitcher. Well, the Red Sox got to the pitcher, Gibry, for two runs, got him out of there, but the home field advantage proved negatively as Bucky Dent found the left field wall in the bottom of the seventh with two on, a typical Fenway Park home run to give the Yankees the lead. A home run by Reggie Jackson added to it, and here we are, bottom of the eighth, Ernie Harwell. And Jerry Remy at the plate, when ready to go. Gossage delivers, it is a strike call. Gossage came on in the seventh inning. Delivers. Here's a foul out of play. Swung late on the Goose's fastball. Hit it upstairs in the Skyview boxes. Strike two of the count on Jerry Remy. He's fly to left twice. Sacrificed out on a bunt in the sixth run in the sixth inning. Here's a pitch. Swinging a foul away from the plate again. Back in the seats. Strike two. The count on Remy. Rice will follow, and then Yastrzemski. The Red Sox have six outs remaining. Gossage, wheels and pitches. Ground ball to first, base hit. Down in the corner, past Chambers, chased by Pinella. Remy going for two, he goes in standing with a double. Rice will be the batter. Right-hand hitting Rice, ready to step in. He is fanned, the bounce to short in the single. He's single in the run in the sixth inning. Yankees lead the Red Sox 5-2. to two. Man on second, nobody out. Fast ball low to Jim Rice from Rich Gussie.
Here's a set. Here's a pitch. He swings and doesn't get it. Let's pause five seconds for stations to identify themselves on the CBS radio network. News, sports, and talk radio for the Metroplex. This is WFAA Dallas-Fort Worth. Rice at the plate waiting on a 1-1 delivery from Gossage. Here it comes. He swings, fly ball, lifted to right field. Here comes Panella fighting the sun, running toward the line. He makes a catch, and Remy holds it second. So Panella picked it off, a short fly down the line in right. And Yastrzemski will be the batter with a home run, a strikeout, and a bounce to first base for his batting record today. Boston with seven hits. Only man with two is George Scott. Yankees have seven hits. Now Yaz waiting and Gossage delivers. Fastball in tight. Just about all the infield is in shadow now, except uh, where the first baseman and the second baseman play. And all of left field is in the shade. Gossage ready. Delivers. There's a ball in too close on Yastrzemski. Eighteen-year veteran with the Boston Red Sox. He just keeps on going. Here's the 2-0 pitch, and he takes a strike. Remy on second, 5-2, Yankees lead. Low and in close, 3-1 and one on Yastrzemski. Set by Gossage, the Yankee right-handed deals. There's a base hit to center field. Remy rounding third, headed home. He scores. Rivers picks up the ball, throws it back into Bucky at the shortstop. Five to three, the Yankees lead Boston. Nobody up in the Yankee bullpen, Ernie. Next batter, Carlton Fisk, right-hand hitter. Before the game, we were chatting with Carlton Fisk and asked him, did he like those game pressure situations where he could be the difference? And he says, that's what you pray for. Well, his prayers have been answered. He's in it right now. Full measure. Man on first, one man out. Tying run out the plate for the Red Sox. Yankees 5, Boston 3, last half of the eighth inning at Fenway Park. Fisk is 0 for 2 plus a walk. He's fly to left, he's fly to center. And he takes the ball low. Well, the crowd that sat so silently in the first half of this inning has now come alive again. Fisk steps away from the plate. Jostemski on first. Chambliss holding on the bag. The pitch. Swung on. Hit high and foul. Back a third. It'll be out of play. Still bouncing up on the roof. Yep. One and one. The count on Carlton Fisk. Left hand batting Fred Lynn on deck. One on. One out for Boston. They trail the Yankees five to three in the last half of the eighth inning. Gossage ready, delivers. Here's a strike call, the fastball across. One and two, the count on him. Now Gossage uh, checking his sign with Munson. Fisk waiting on one, two. The pitch swung on and fouled away. That son must really be vicious. Uh, Fred Stanley, the second baseman. At the start of every pitch, he puts his hand up in front of his eyes. Yep. Now Carlton Fisk stepping out, ready to get back in. One on, one out. Yankees lead the Red Sox five to three of the eighth inning. One-two pitch. He swings and fouls it away. Back in the seats. 
over on the first base side. So the tension holds here at Fenway. And Thurman Munson crouching behind the plate on every pitch is praying for the outside corner. He's leaning out there. He wants the ball there. Don't let him pull it. Two all rivals, those two, Fisk and Munson. Now Fisk digging and waiting. Here it is. He swings and fouls it off. Back of the plate. This one will be out of play. On to the screen. Oh, you've got that game within the game. The pitcher versus the batter. Continues here in Fenway Park in Boston. Story of the game right now, a four up there for the Yankees in the seventh inning. Three of them came on a home run by Bucky Dent to put the Yankees in front. Here's a set. Here's a pitch. He takes the ball low. Oh, that was close. 2-2 two, two, the count on Fisk. Yankees five, Red Sox three, eighth inning. Infield in the double play depth for New York. Gossage delivers. Here's a ball high, three and two. One team can be the winner. One team will go to Kansas City. One team will go home. Right now, the Yankees lead by two runs, five to three. It's a three-two count on Fisk. The pitch. He swings, and it's a foul ball down past third. That one was ripped hard, but foul by a couple of feet. And Nettles was guarding that line. Had it been on the fair side, I think he would have been in position. Normally, it would have been a double, but not the way Nettles is playing in these late innings. Gossage uh, gets a new baseball to work with. Fisk back in the batter's box. Here it comes. He swings as a base hit to center field. Yastrzemski holds it second on the single by Fisk. Two on, one away. And now it's the Red Sox trying to rally. will be the next batter. It's play up in the bullpen for the Yankees now. Lynn is 0 for 3 this afternoon. Batting fourth 17 in the last 10 games. He's been on a hot streak. He wants the umpire vote for the baseball. He does. Two men on. One man down. Eighth inning. The tying runs are on the bases for the Red Sox against Gossage. The right-handed pitches. Lynn fouls it away to the screen. Sparky Lyle, the forgotten Cy Young Award winner, is up loosening for the Yankees along with Young Clay. Hobson waits on deck for Boston. Gossage pitches. Lynn swings. Base hit. Left field. Here comes the Spirsky. Round the third. He comes home. Stopping at second is Fisk. Another run in for Boston. Five to four. The Yankees lead. Here comes the Yankee manager, Bob Lemon, out. In the next batter. Let's see what happens. Ernie and I are sitting on what would be the mezzanine in a theater. It's a box that's hanging off the top of the roof of the new Fenway Park. And right now, I can tell you, my friends, it's hanging because it's jittery. It's, it has those undul... I saw a movie once where a bridge in Washington, you know, got into the harmonics of the movement. I hope the people cheer unevenly here, because if they don't, we're not going to see who wins this thing. Lemon's gone back. He's gone with Gossage in him. Men on first and second. One out. Five-four. New York. It's Butch Hobson. He doesn't want to 
going to go to the hospital tomorrow. He wants to chip in, not chip out right now. Here's the pitch. He takes the ball low. Ball one from Gossage. Hobson has bounced the third. Singled and struck out. George Scott waits on deck. He swings fly ball right field. Panella is under it now, looking up in the sun and makes the catch. And the runners hold on. So Hobson is out. And now it will be the boomer, George Scott, the base gossage. Five to four. The Yankees with a one-run margin. And right now, the margin is the home run by Reggie Jackson. Absolutely. And for Boomer Scott, who's had such a disappointing season, this would turn everything around if he could let one go this time. George has a double and a single. He struck out his middle time at bat. Gossage ready, delivers. It is a ball outside to Scott. Fisk on second, Lynn on first. Five to four, the Yankees lead Boston. He swings and fouls it away to the screen. Oh, one and one, the count on Scott. And that was a Lansdowne Street swing. Red Sox have out hit the Yankees. Ten hits to seven. The Yankees lead five to four. The one one delivery. Scott swings and misses. So Gossage ahead of him now. One ball and two strikes. Two men on, two men out. Five, four Yankees, eighth inning. Gossage ready, Scott waiting. Here it comes. He swings and misses. The inning's over as Gossage strikes him out to stop the Boston rally. They got two runs on four hits. Well, there were no errors. Two Red Sox runners were left. And we go to the ninth inning. The Yankees five, Boston four. When do you is a car destined to become a classic. The new Riviera. It has the traction of front-wheel drive. It is supported independently at all four wheels. And it has almost every power assist available. Standard. The new Buick Riviera. At least once in your life, you should own a car this incredible. So we've got one inning to go, and boy, what an exciting game for an exciting season. And of course, that means that coming up next year, how about you? Why don't you get in on some of these games instead of wishing you had some tickets? This is the time to do something about it. Make sure you and your family don't miss out on some of the exciting games next year. Call your favorite team and ask about 1979 season tickets. They have a ticket plan to fit your need, I'm sure. Why don't you join the more than 40 million fans who enjoyed baseball at the ballparks this year? Baseball fever? Catch it now for 79. The proceeding brought to you on behalf of Major League Baseball. In the Major League season, Eastern Division of the American League, regular season play, that is, and the most irregular season I've ever seen, it's down to three outs apiece. The Yankees leading by the run. But the Jackson home run following the Bucky Dent loft over the screen. And here we go, Ernie. And it'll be Fred Stanley, the Yankee second baseman, hitting 220. Up for his first time after replacing Doyle. He swings the ground ball to second. Rennie gobbles it up. Throw to Scott. Got him. One away. So Hassler, who came on in the eighth inning, has set down the four Yankees at his face. He was preceded by Torres and uh, Stanley. Here's Bucky Dan, who hit the uh, big blow here in this ball game, a three-run homer in the seventh inning to take the lead away from the Boston Red Sox and give it to the Yankees. 
They added another run in that inning, and then Jackson hit a home run in the eighth. That's how the Yanks have scored their five. And Dent takes the ball outside. One out, ninth inning. The Yankees lead five to four. Andy Hassler kicks and delivers. Strike a breaking ball over. One and one the count on him. Here's the motion by Hassler. He delivers. Here's a fly ball at the left. This one's going foul and will end up on the rooftop. That was harder hit than his home run. Right in the <laughs> same direction, only 15 feet to the left and foul. The Yankees have Paul Blair waiting at the on-deck circle right now. Five to four, they lead in the ninth inning at Boston. Dent leaning in, waiting on a one-two delivery from Hasley. Here it is. He swings and rolls a foul over to the on-deck circle. Yastrzemski homing in the second. Rice knocked in a run in the sixth inning. Boston had a 2-0 lead going into the seventh. And that's when the Yankees exploded. Single by Chambliss, a single by White, a home run by Dent. Then a walk to Rivers. He stole second and rode home on a double by Munson. Then Jackson homer to start the eighth. And then the Red Sox came back with two in the eighth to pull within one. Now the pitch to Dent is a strike. He called him out on strike. Two down, nobody on. The second strikeout recorded by the left-hand reliever Hassler. And now Paul Blair, the veteran outfielder, who has a four for 15 this year as a pinch batter. And overall hitting 169 will be the hitter. Blanky right-hand batting Paul Blair. He's batting for Mickey Rivers. At the top of the Yankee batting order. Two down, nobody on in the night. The Yanks lead 5-4. to four. There's a foul to the screen. And Blair, an improvement over Rivers, there's no question about that. That's not negative for Mickey, but Blair is one of the finer center fielders in baseball, and he's in there for both offense and defense. And a real veteran, and uh, he's been a big man in key situations uh, since he's been with the Yankees. Strike one, the count on Paul. Hassler trying to get that final out now in the first half of the ninth inning. The Yankees lead it 5-4 to four in Boston. Blair moves up in the batter's box and takes the ball outside. If I remember correctly, Blair got the key hit and down in Kansas City in the playoffs last year. Now Hassler ready to go to work. Here's the motion and the pitch. Blair takes. It is wide. Two and one. Hassler thought he had the corner. Don Denkinger didn't think so. Uh, Hassler gets uh, baseball from Fisk. Walks in a semicircle. Back of the mound. Now gets up on the slab. Quiet crowd again at Fenway. 2-1 pitch to Blair. He swings on a bounding ball past the third baseman Duffy's glove. And on into left field, fielded by Yastrzemski. So Blair comes up with a two-out single in the Yankee ninth inning. And here comes Don Zimmer out. And Dick Drago has been throwing hard without stopping. And it's possible, yep, it's Drago is coming in to face the right-handed Thurman Munson. And so it's going to go down to the last pitch, as it should and as it would anyway. Casper leaves. Four, the Yankees over the Red Sox. Two outs in the top of the ninth. And Paul Blair, who skipped that ball past Duffy on the shortstop side of third base, is on first as we await the arrival of Dick Drago from the Red Sox bullpen. If you joined us late, Carl Yastrzemski hit a home run into the right field stands in the second inning off of Ron Guidry. The Red Sox added a run in the sixth thing when Jim Rice lined a single into center field. It was 2-0 going into the seventh inning. And then, as uh, Ernie had just mentioned, a fly ball to left field with two on by Bucky Dent brought in three. Uh, Thurman Munson doubled in on other. And then in the eighth inning, a home run by Jackson. And that's how the Yankees have their edge. Now let's have a brief update from CBS News in New York. 
This is Doug Poling reporting on the CBS radio network. President Carter has invited Egypt and Israel to send representatives to Washington to negotiate a Mideast peace treaty. The meetings would start on October 12th. The U.S. Supreme Court began its new term today. The court refused to reconsider a ruling, allowing police with warrants to make surprise searches of newsrooms and other places where no one is suspected of a crime. The court also upheld the right of employers to take action against employees who refuse to do work reasonably believed to be dangerous. The government had sought to bar such retaliation. An unexplained landslide hit a three-block area of Laguna Beach, California today. It lasted two hours and destroyed at least 25 homes. No injuries reported. Mourners by the thousands braved a steady downpour in Vatican City to pay their last respects to Pope John Paul I. He'll be buried Wednesday in a ceremony like that for his predecessor, Pope Paul. HEW Secretary Califano says he'll urge President Carter to veto a tuition tax credit bill for students going to college. He calls the billion dollar tax bill unwise and inflationary. On Wall Street today, the Dow Jones Industrial Averages closed up five and a half points. And now back to today's game in Boston. Dick Drago has just come in and relief of Andy Hassler, who had previously relieved Bob Stanley, who had previously relieved the starter Mike Torres. Drago is here because the Yankees have a man on first base in this top of the ninth with two out and the ever-dangerous Thurman Munson coming to bat. Hassler being a left-hander, Zimmer has uh, gone for the percentages and he's bringing in the hard-throwing Drago. Munson has had a peculiar day. His first three times he struck out and then his fourth time after Dent had lofted the ball over the uh, wall and into the screen with Rivers on, he hit a double to left center scoring the speedy Rivers for the fourth run. Then Jackson's following home run in the eighth inning has given the Yankees the lead. The Red Sox came back for two in the eighth then left two on base with just one out, and that's where we are now with the Yankees trying to add to their edge, Hernie. And uh, Munson at the plate, Drago the right-hander, four and four, one and loss record this year. He deals one over to first to keep uh, Blair close. Oh, he's not yet uh, thrown a pitch to Thurman Munson, the right-hand batting Yankee catcher. Five to four, the Yankees lead in the ninth inning. They've got two down. Blair off the bag a little bit at first base. And they set the throw over there to drive him back again. He's safe. 37th appearance for Drago. Earned run average against the Yankees is 4.20. A little worse than his average against the league. Here's the set by Dick now. The right-hander ready. And the pitch on the way. Munson takes the ball wide. Ball one. The count on Thurman. Five runs, eight hits, no errors for New York. Boston, four runs, ten hits, and no errors. Ninth inning. The playoff game for the American League East Championship. Blair getting a longer lead at first. Scott holding on the bag with him. Trey Gall ready. Sets, holds it. And the pitch is a wide one. A two and oh. The count on Munson. Outfield straight away and bunching toward the middle on Munson. Infield is back with two out of the nine at first base. Yankees ahead of the Red Sox, five to four, ninth inning. Drago making him wait. Now Dick goes to the set position. Holds it, delivers. It is a swing and a bounding ball to short. Going over Burleson, throws to Remy, out at second. On a close play is Blair. And the Yankees are out in the ninth inning. No run on one hit. No and one man left. We go to the last half tonight. New York 5, Boston 4. Summer comes early in Texas and stays around for a long time. Too long. Unless, like most Texans, yours is an air-conditioned world. Nowadays, there's more to surviving a Texas summer than just having central air conditioning. There's the cost of operation. Betters, aware of spiraling utility costs, is today's best bet. High efficiency air conditioning with the new rotary compressor offers maximum cooling and saves you money summer after Texas summer. For a limited time, when you install Fetter's rotary-powered central air conditioning, you'll receive a famous entry alert, battery-powered burglar alarm, absolutely free. Call one of these Fetter's dealers today for a free, no-obligation cooling survey. 
Bob's Heating and Air Conditioning, 223 North Beach in Fort Worth, and Pascal Heating and Air Conditioning, P.O. Box 191 in Keller. Feathers is a name you can trust. Changes in the outfield for the New York Yankees for defensive purposes as we come to the bottom of the ninth. Gary Thomason has replaced White in left field and Paul Blair who batted for Rivers, is now taken over in center field. And for the Red Sox, pinch hitting for Frank Duffy will be the right fielder Dwight Evans, who was hit by a pitched ball late in the season, developed double vision. He has a problem with his inner ear, Ernie, that leaves him dizzy. He, however, says he has learned to accommodate for it. He could play, but Zimmer didn't want to break up a winning lineup. The winning lineup is not winning as we come to the last of the ninth trailing by a run. So here is Dwight Dewey Evans to face Rich Gossage, the first of the last of the three for the Red Sox, maybe. Evans uh, digging in now. He's batting 248, 24 home runs, 63 RBIs. Right-hand batter, Mr. Denkinger, will dust off the plate in preparation for this uh, last half tonight inning. The Yankees lead it by one, five to four. Gossage on the mound, the wind-up and the pitch. It is a ball low to Evans. Burleson on deck, and then it'll be Remy. Now, time called at the plate. A ball fell out into the outfield. A policeman came out. Dwight jumped out, and now we're ready. Here's a pitch. He swings and hits a high pop-up into short left field. The new left fielder, Thomason, is under it. He has it one away. Oh, the Yankees are two outs away from being the Eastern Division champions. If either Burleson or Remy can get on, Jim Rice. That's the kind of drama that's building here. Here's Burleson. He doubled in the sixth inning. Has one hit for four, and he takes the ball low. Boston with ten hits. Scott with two, Yuskimski with two, and everybody has one except the ninth hitter. There's a ball outside, 2-0. and oh. In that ninth spot, it's been Brohammer and Duffy, who didn't bat, and Bailey, who batted for him, and Evans. Here's the pitch, and he takes the ball, 3-0. and oh. Excitement in Boston. Five to four, the Yankees lead. Nobody on base. One man down for Boston. Here's a pitch. And it's a strike call. The breaking ball from Gossett. Tying run at the plate. Merlson uh, steps out a moment. 3-1, the count on him. Here's the windup. Here's a pitch. He takes a walk. Ball four. It's not over yet. Time run on first base. Jerry Remy to the bat. Last time up, he doubled the right center to start the eighth inning rally that got the Red Sox two runs. Out there will be straight up on Remy. They've got the Nettles even with a bag at third. Then and Stanley up halfway out around second. Here's the pitch on the way. He swings and fouls it away. Let's see Nettles. Can he get this one? Nope, it'll be in the seats. Clay and Lyle are working in the Yankee bullpen. Right down to the last half of the ninth inning. In the playoff game for the Eastern Division Championship. Here's a pitch. He swings and misses. Strike two on Remy. on first, Burleson. One man down, 5-4. Yankees lead it. Waiting on deck is Jim Rice. Here's a set. Gossage delivers. There's a foul to the screen. Just got a piece of the fastball. Now, what a difference in the swing. Before he went for Lansdowne, and there he was just trying to get a piece of the ball. Just protecting the plate. Now, Remy steps out, ready to get back in. Gossage is not quite ready. Now, he looks into Munson to get his sign. A strike two pitch. Swing, line drive to right. It'll be a hit. Canella grabs it. On the third goes Burleson and now heads back to second and makes it. Canella had trouble with that ball after it hit. 
He had trouble picking it out of the sun, but he managed to do it and hold the runner Burleson in second. Jim Wright. Maybe Shakespeare invented baseball, not Abner Doubleday. It's drama, all right. Muscular drama here at Fenway. Rice. Who has set all kind of records for Boston at the plate against the hard-throwing Gossage. One out, five to four, the Yankees lead. The pitch swung on and fouled away. Back toward the press box. Burleson on second, Remy on first. Rice has 16 game-winning RBIs to lead the Boston club. And listen to this crowd. Gossage trying to hold them off. The strike one pitch. Swing, fly ball, right field, deep. Going back, Pinella fighting the sun. He's under the ball. He makes a catch. Here's a tag, and Burleson heads from second to third, holding at first is Remy. Rice is out, and now it'll be Yastrzemski. And possibly Sparky Lyle. Whatever, as you might have hoped, this season has come down to the dramatic finish. Not anti-climax. The big finish. Men on first and third. Carl Yastrzemski, who started the scoring with the home run. His team trailing by a run, last of the ninth, two outs. Conference at the mound. Lemon leaves, and he's going to leave Gossage in. And the batter will be Carl Yastrzemski. And there's no doubt about it, this is the season right here. Absolutely. Jastrzemski homered in the second. Single in the eighth. Between those two trips, he struck out and bounced to first. When you talk about pressure, here it is right here in the ninth inning. Five to four, the New York Yankees lead. A man at first and a man at third. Jastrzemski at bat for Boston. Munson uh, wants to yell something out to second baseman Stanley. He gets a little deeper out there now. Yep. And here's the veteran Yastrzemski stepping in. Burleson on third and Remy on first. The pitch is a ball low, ball one. Carlton Fisk is the next batter. If Yaz gets a hit, Ernie, you won't have to say a word. Five to four, the Yankees lead it. They took the lead in the seventh inning. On a three-run homer by Bucky Dent. They've held it since then. Gossett ready, delivers. Here's a pop-up. Over near third, should end the game. Nettles is under it. He has it, and the Yankees are the champions. Nettles catches a foul ball. Yastrzemski is out, and the season is over. The Yankees go on to Kansas City. That says it, Ernie. The Yankees in a clod over in front of their dugout. Folks running out to congratulate them, the partisans from New York. But not the mass scene that we have seen in some of the ballparks so far because the majority of the crowd, Red Sox rooters, are very quiet, just about stunned by the sudden end of the game on the second pitch to Carl Yastrzemski. Well, back to Fenway Park in just one minute. <laughs> Ted Arendale invites you to come see all the new 1979 Ford cars and trucks, and especially the new 1979 LTD American Road Car, with easy handling, quick, responsive steering, new suspension system, more visibility, more trunk space, more lap room, more leg room, more shoulder room, more everything for you at Ted Arendale Ford. See 
it at 201 East Division in Arlington. It's all over at Fenway Park. The Yankees, the Eastern Division American League champions, 5-4. to four. And strangely enough, as John Kiley is tooting away on the organ, most of the 33,000 folks are just standing and not leaving. As though they were stunned by the sudden end of the season, by the fantastic surge by their heroes in the early part of the year, then the collapse, and then the comeback, and the tease of the win on the last day as the Yankees were humbled by Cleveland, the early lead they took in this game, Yaz's home run in the second inning, then Jimmy Rice with that ringing single to center field that made it 2 nothing, and then the fateful seventh inning. I said it before, Nettles had said that the Red Sox had the home field advantage. It did not prove out. The Yankees got two on in that seventh inning. Shambliss and White quick singles. Spencer flied out to left field, and it seemed that Mike Torres was out of it. Bucky Dent came to the plate. On the second or third pitch, he swung. The ball glanced off his instep or his shin on his left foot, and he winced, obviously, in pain, an injury that he had had before this year. On the very next pitch, an insider, he got around on it, lofted it high into the air, and it just managed to get inside the foul pole and over the fence at the 315-foot mark to give the Yan Yankees the lead. They scored one more run as a result of a walk, a steal, and a Munson double. The next inning, Jackson got a home run to give them the five runs. The Red Sox responded with two in the eighth, leaving two. Had two on and two out in the ninth, and Carl Yastrzemski just couldn't do it. He fouled out to Greg Nettles and back a third, and that was it. We'll be back to the stadium here at Fenway Park in just 30 seconds. Buick continues the turbocharging of America with the world's biggest choice of turbocharged cars. The 1979 Turbo Buicks. Four cars, all powered by the remarkable turbocharged V6. To drive one is to want one. The new Turbo Buicks. Century Turbo Coupe, Regal Sport Coupe, the Sabre Sport Coupe, and the Riviera S-Type. When it comes to turbocharging, nobody else even comes close. at Fenway Park, so what's to say? Not much with the season over here, although in defeat, the Red Sox seemingly had the better of the play. They had more hits, they had more men on, their hits were the ringing variety, it was just that one blow by Bucky Dent, but that's been the Yankee history, Ernie. You call them money players, they're players with pride, and they seem to have the instinct for the juggler to go for it when it counts, whether it's the seventh, the eighth, or the ninth inning, or even in our wrap-up, which we will continue in just a moment. A new way of life is waiting for you. If you have not yet discovered the motorhome way, you owe it to yourself to find out. Come into Holiday Lincoln Mercury in Fort Worth, Tarrant County's exclusive headquarters for Winnebago Motor Homes. The new 79 Winnebagos are now on display. A Winnebago will bring your doorstep to the mountains, the seashores, the historic sites, the streams and woods for fishing or hunting. A Winnebago can be your luxury condominium on wheels, where you entertain friends from coast to coast. A Winnebago takes you to baseball or football games, or wherever the crowds assemble. And you will never have to worry about motel vacancies or crowded restaurants. It's a whole new way of life. Leisurely, convenient, luxurious. Life in a Winnebago. See the new 79 Winnebagos today in Fort Worth at Holiday Lincoln Mercury. Forest Park Boulevard at the West Freeway. Well, there you have it. The Yankees have defeated the Red Sox by a score of 5-4 to four and will return to our post-game wrap-up in just one minute. This is Win Elliott for Ernie Harwell, CBS Radio Sports.